My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? So let's dive right into the exciting news topics. Let's dive right in. Let's dive. In. You rock. What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch. Let's light like this candle. Ignition sequence start. There we go. Good evening, everybody. I hope the microphone is uh, <clears throat> correctly set up because last stream I had a bit of a problem with that, but it should be okay now. Okay, um, I saw that everybody was saying where they where they all were from, and uh, I'm so happy to have you all here tonight for Bob and Dog's return. That's going to be absolutely epic. Uh, this is one evening where Let's Dive Right In fits perfectly, because they are going to splash down uh, off the coast of Florida near Pensacola, and everything is set up right now, and uh, Jim Bridenstine right now is uh, telling everybody how proud he is about... Uh, um, I don't know if I should already. Let me let me um, <clears throat> let me see what I can do here. Give me a second. Um, so this should do the trick. There is Jim. Let's just listen into what he has to say real quick here. Yes. Oh wait, you can't listen in. We call it. There we go. For example, these are all things that we think that there is a marketplace for the future. So look, right now we're doing commercial resupply of the International Space Station. As of today, uh, when Bob and Doug come home safely, we will be doing commercial crew to the International Space Station. The next big thing is we need commercial space stations themselves. 
And in order to create the market for commercial space stations, we have to have these transformational capabilities that come from the microgravity environment. And that's really what we're developing right now. And as you know, a big day for NASA today, but how about a big week? And this week really alone, we launched sweet. Mars 2020. Artemis One's launch vehicle stage adapter was delivered to Kennedy Space Center. And here we are completing the first commercial, commercially crewed mission to the International Space Station. What are your thoughts on the state of the agency at this point? So make no mistake, uh, NASA's budget right now is the highest it's ever been in nominal dollars. Um, and, and it's at you know, $22 billion. The budget request that President Trump gave us that is before the House and the Senate right now is $25.2 billion. It's not just about sustaining you know, capabilities like commercial crew, commercial resupply, the International Space Station. It's also about developing new capabilities so that the United States of America can stay the preeminent spacefaring nation. It's why we created the Artemis program to go to the moon sustainably with commercial partners and international partners to use the resources of, of the moon to live and work for long periods of time and then take all of that knowledge onto Mars. And of course, as you mentioned on Thursday, you know, we launched uh, the, you know, another Mars mission, the most sophisticated robot that NASA has ever developed is right now on its yes. way to Mars. And we're going to prove that we can turn the carbon dioxide atmosphere of Mars into pure oxygen for life support. But there's so many other things. We're looking for life on another world. We're looking for signs of ancient life um, on Mars. Um, we're talking about microbial life, but life nonetheless. And um, this, is, this is really a, a bright moment for NASA. I want to be clear, though. Um, we need support from our members of Congress in both the House and the Senate. Uh, we, we need to be able to get that $25.2 billion. All right, let me, let me turn him down here real requested. quick a little bit. Um, so, so um, yeah, I, I was uh, watching the chat, and it's crazy where you all are from. It's, it's always amazing to see where everybody's from, and it's, it's all over the world. Watching, uh, watching need, this, the, the, the dragon splash down with me right now, and that is just amazing. And that's what he said there too. Jim, thanks for joining um, us today. Such it's, an exciting day. And in case you it's crazy it what's happening ago, in the in SpaceX the in the space industry right now. So many things we've seen. Perseverance launch. That's what he was talking about here. Let me get him down here real quick again, a little bit. Ah, now SpaceX is talking. They don't leave me any time to do any introduction here. They're busy. Uh, give me a second. I'm, I'm turning like them up we've again. Been waiting for for the last couple of hours, <laughs> and it feels pretty great to be here. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, in this next phase of the mission, Dragon has a series of steps to complete before returning Bob and Doug home. Uh, as you've heard us talk a little bit so far this morning, uh, Dragon will maneuver to the correct attitude and jettison its trunk, uh, which is the cylindrical, unpressurized part of the, um, of the assembly. Uh, we need to expose the heat shield in order to prepare the capsule for uh, atmospheric reentry. So uh, we will... Oh, there we got a nice view of Bob and Doug in Beautiful their suits. View. This is the first time we've seen them in their suits and in their chairs this morning. So there they are tapping right, I th away, I think preparing I can do what she does uh, to... Um, so what's, what's coming up next is in about 45 minutes, we have uh, claw and trunk separation. For those who do not know what that is, um, right now the spacecraft's two modules. We have the capsule and uh, we have d the trunk uh, attached to the capsule. It's right now covering the heat shield, so it'll have to go... Uh, before before re-entry and uh, so in yeah f hopefully 45 minutes we'll see the trunk and the claw separated so the claw is what attaches the, the trunk to the capsule itself and uh, after that we'll have a re-entry burn uh, that means there are four draco thrusters on top maybe you've seen a, a picture before of a crew dragon it has this uh yeah flip top on top the cone can 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 flip away and under there are four draco thrusters and they will do the re-entry burn and uh, after that is done uh, the capsule will um um reorientate itself towards the atmosphere with the shield and then do the re-entry and uh, after that uh, while the re-entry is going on we'll have about six minutes or so of uh um, radio silence from the capsule because it is an uh, engulfed in plasma that forms from the from the heat, which is actually I I wrote down the the imperial because I'm not really good at Fahrenheit, so um, 
The capsule is going to be 2000 Celsius, Celsius when it when it uh, enters the atmosphere and that's about 3500 Fahrenheit. So it's a 12 ton vehicle in total and uh, uh, so including the trunk and it gets incredibly hot when it enters the atmosphere. That forms plasma around the capsule and that means radio silence. Uh, that's not a problem though because the Crew Dragon is fully automated so it does not need any contact to ground stations to perform the re-entry and Doug and Bob will pr pretty much as you can see here uh, be pa um, passengers along the right. They have the option if needed to take over manually and uh, guide the capsule down but on a nominal uh, re-entry they won't have to do that. And then at uh, I wrote it down again because I really don't know the Imperial. <laughs> at 18,000 feet or 5,300 meters we have two drogue shoots deploying at I wrote that down to 350 miles per hour so that is pretty quick 560 kilometers per hour and then at 6,000 feet or 1,800 meters height and uh, considerably less uh, speed because uh, drogue shoots uh, have two reasons why they're on the capsule. First of all they are to take away the initial speed that is still there after re-entry. Secondly, they're there to, to, to stabilize the capsule, um, to stabilize, stabilize the flight path. So uh, the shield points down and the pointy end points upwards. And uh, that's what they'll do. And then uh, at 6,000 feet or 1,800 meters above ground, so fairly low above the ground, they will have uh, the four main chutes deploying at 119 miles per hour or 190 kilometers per hour. And that slows the whole capsule down to... I haven't wrote, written that down in Imperial. As I think it's 35 kilometers per hour, roughly. 30, 30, 35 kilometers per hour. And um, that should be... I don't know, 15 miles per hour, something like that. And that's when the splashdown happens. So right now we're looking forward to in about 42 minutes now, we should have a claw and trunk separation. And then comes the big moment with the re-entry burn. And uh, the reason for the trunk separating so close um, to, to the re-entry burn is because they want it separated as close to the atmosphere as possible. And... Um, so that it burns up quickly because there's uh, all sorts of trash in there and uh, it's a pretty pretty big piece of hardware and you don't want to want that to be stuck in orbit so that's why they do that so close to the re-entry burn and uh yeah that's the the rough uh estimate of what we're going to see in the next um couple of hours actually because when they splash down uh, immediately there is one boat that will approach the capsule to, to see if there are any toxic fumes around. Um, hypergolic fuels tend to be really, really bad if you inhale the, the fumes that come out. And after they are uh, sure that there is no danger, immediate danger, a second boat will approach and then uh, go navigator, the SpaceX recovery ship that is already... Actually, I... Ah, oh, that's a wonderful pictures from inside the car. I, I have something prepared here. Uh, I even have a snippet of the undock, if you haven't seen that yet, because for me, for a European, that was in the middle of the night and I was sleeping pretty good. And uh, so I have that um, prepared as well. If we have a quiet moment, we can look into that. And um, yeah, Go Navigator will go into position and uh, recover the capsule. And that should take 45 to 60 minutes, roughly. And once that's done, um, they'll do an initial medical check on the two astronauts as soon as they are out of the capsule. And then they will do a, a helicopter ride to, um, to the land. And that's another 10 to 15 minutes or so. And if they are planning any initial interviews or something, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, which would be epic, of course, if they can uh, talk to them right away. But we'll have to wait and see. And right now, Bob and Dog are on their final orbit. They are, so as you can see on the monitor there in the, in the Crew Dragon capsule, you can see that the orbit ends above Florida. And so this is the final orbit that they are doing right, right now. And they are not too far away from uh, trunk and claw uh, separation. If you've got any questions for me, make sure to, oh, look at that, beautiful. Uh, let me see if they 
Um, we'll be getting this back, and uh, if we acquire it the same time we did for Demo 1, uh, we were Beautiful. able to see the capsule while it was still in that atmospheric reentry. So it was just this really bright light that all of a sudden lit up the sky, and that was the first view we got of Dragon. Yes. And so we'll use that to hopefully see uh, during the entry and then the initial parachute deploys. And then we'll have a couple more assets on the ground or on the water on the boat uh, that will get a couple more views of Dragon as it delivers Bob and Doug safely to the yeah. ocean. Typical SpaceX yeah, so coverage. So as you can hear, the, nice. all of this excitement will be happening in pretty rapid succession. Uh, yeah, as I as I said, exactly. This is uh, going to be really, really exciting very, very soon. For the last few hours, we just saw them coast, basically. And uh, now the in interesting part starts. So that is going to be absolutely epic. It's the first splashdown for the US uh, after Apollo, so it's been ages, and even even um, Soyuz doesn't splash down in the ocean. Well, they had an accidental splashdown once they landed on a frozen lake, um, but normally they land on land. So this is the first time that this splash down splash down method is returning to active um, crewed spaceflight, which is absolutely epic. It should be really really cool to see. Uh, and I see, oh, I got a super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the coffee money. That is much appreciated. It goes into the production of the show. So if you have, if you want to, there are several options to, to, to support me in my efforts. You can do super chats. You can buy some merch. Uh, if the moderators want to put in the link to the merch store, you can become a patron and get access to the Discord where we're having a splashdown party going on right now, which is really, really cool. And uh, so there are several options that you can support me with. Thank you, Mike. That is much, much appreciated. I'm not wearing the orange pants, no. Uh, but I am wearing a new shirt from the merch store. I, I can stand up for you real quick. Look at that. New shirt. Love it. So they are really comfortable, actually, and I put a lot of work in designing them because I normally um, I hate it when when merch stores don't actually have something that is that is cool. And so I, I put some some effort into it because I want you to really like the stuff if you buy something. So, yeah, they are still checking suits and stuff. They had uh, they did a leak check earlier. Where exactly to test if the, um, let me turn this down a little bit more, uh, to test if the if the suits are properly working and they are ready and prepared now. And it's absolutely epic. I would, in a blink of an eye, uh, um, switch position with them right now. That is so absolutely epic. I've been watching the stream the whole day, basically, and it is... Uh, I think SpaceX does the by far best job in covering this kind of stuff. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful to look at. And uh, yeah, uh, live pictures from the ship, live pictures pictures from the capsule, uh, uh, plane in place to, to, to see the capsule for, uh, in the air while it's going down. So we're going to have a beautiful coverage. All right, I've, I've got a few questions here. Let me, let me see if I can answer a few of those. John M has been asking, what is the trunk for? I never really understood that. Okay, it's got several reasons why that trunk is attached. It's first of all, it's power supply. It's got the solar panels on board. It's storage space when they go up, all the mission, uh, the scientific stuff, supplies for the ISS is on in, in the trunk. So it is a trunk that supplies power. And uh, when they depart the ISS, the trunk, the trunk can't re-enter because it doesn't have a heat shield. So they store all sorts of, st of trash in the trunk to make it burn up in the atmosphere. So it, uh, when it goes up, it is there to, to get cargo to the ISS and supply power to the, to the capsule, also when it's attached to the ISS. And when it goes down, it's a, it's a trash bin, basically. It, it burns up in the atmosphere and it's filled up with all stuff that they don't need anymore on the ISS. So that's what the trunk's for. Good question, thank you. Uh, we have another question from X uh, from MXL. Hey Felix, I know the splashdown is 2:42 p.m. EDT. When is the re-entry? Greetings from Munich. Okay, so uh, I think the landing is supposed to be 18:48 UTC. So that would be five minutes later than or six minutes later than what you said, and the whole 
the send takes quite some time. So we were we're the we're coming up on the claw and trunk separation at uh, in about 35 minutes from now. Um, after that comes a 11 minute re-entry burn and then comes the re-entry. After the re-entry burn basically um, the capsule hits the atmosphere and gets first aerodynamic effects and the heat shield heats up so that it's immediately after that. So the re-entry should be in an hour roughly maybe a little less 55 minutes something like that. Um, yeah, good question. Thank you. Um, Andrew Nova Costa. Will Doug and Bob be interviewed today after landing? I hope so. I don't know. Um, and I wouldn't want to pressure them into into doing an interview right away, because uh, if they are not in the condition condition to do an interview, they shouldn't be forced to do it. But I really, really hope they do. But I have no information. It would be great, though. If that happens, though, it would be quite some time after the after the landing, because uh, once they are out out the capsule, they exit the capsule when they are on the ship on Go Navigator. So it's not like in the Apollo days where they exit the capsule while the capsule is floating in the water or something. They exit the capsule when they when it's on the ship, and then they get a medical. So uh, I'm pretty sure they're not going to do an interview then on the boat. So we'd have to wait at least another 30, 45, 50 minutes or something. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It would be cool. Good question. Thank you. Uh, Will 1212, what is in the trunk? Yeah, I've kind of answered that already. It's trash, basically anything that they don't need anymore on the space station because it glows, it, it burns up in the atmosphere. So it's a very convenient way to get rid of all sorts of waste. Um, old, they, for example, when they um, um, changed the batteries on the ISS, which has been going on for quite some time now, I think two years or so, they, they've been changing nickel, old nickel batteries uh, for lithium ion battery, batteries. And every time they had them changed, they put them into the into the trunk of the uh, progress vehicles and let them glow up, burn up in the atmosphere. So um, that's the stuff that you find in the trunk on re-entry, all sorts of stuff that you don't need anymore. Um, Vinod Kumar, how much G on astronauts? Uh, around four Gs on ascend, I think, and not that much on descend. I, I don't know the precise number, but I'd say it's m not more than a, um, a slow roller coaster or something. Um, it's so it's uh, the G forces are more on ascend than they are on re entry. But uh, good question. Thank you. Uh, Jay Delpine is asking, when will Crew Dragon begin to encounter friction? Uh, right after the re-entry burn. Um, the re-entry burn um, lowers the orbit orbit actually into the atmosphere and fairly soon after, after the re-entry burn is done, uh, first aerodynamic fac uh, effects are seen on the capsule itself. And then they go stronger and stronger. And like I said, it heats up to 2000 Celsius or 3,500 Fahrenheit for the US um, um, uh, crowd watching. And that is quite hot. Um, I also have, a, they are just talking right now and showing the room. Let me, let me just real quick switch to something here. I hope this works because I have prepared something for you. Okay, so this is, I have some, some pictures here that I want to show you. Um, first of all, um, let me, Kill this audio completely here for a second. And we'll, we'll, we're going to watch the uh, Dragon departure uh, from the ISS. For those who didn't stay up in the night or missed it yesterday when, when, when it was going on. Um, so we, we, we are in the picture here. So this is Bob and Dog still on the ISS, attaching a sticker to the, to the, to the inner hatch, or actually to the capsule. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. The final reconfigurations the for capsule. undock are complete and nominal. The ground is go for undocking at the undocking sequence start time of 2330 GMT. Please confirm your visors are down and that you are ready for undock and departure. Beautiful. Dragon copies go for undock on time. Our visors are down and we're ready for departure. That's where the undocking Dragon happens. SpaceX, all Local hooks separation. open and nominal.
Dragon SpaceX, separation confirmed. Now we get some beautiful pictures of the RCS system firing. Three burns, the, physical separation, 4.35 p.m. You Pacific. You see these flashes and blasts coming out. That is the Thrusters RCS system. Thrusters looking good. Counting down to a nominal departure burn zero coming up shortly. Beautiful to watch. And uh, you see there these four big holes under the um, the cap. Those are the Draco thrusters that will do the re-entry burn, and they did the departure Dragon burn. Dragon SpaceX depart burn zero complete. Happy complete. Revisors up. And with that, Bob and Doug have concluded their stay aboard the International Space Station. They're on their way back to planet Earth. Confirms a physical separation at 4.35 p.m. Pacific as the station and Dragon were flying 267 statue miles over Johannesburg, South Africa. It's beautiful to watch. Love it. Station Endeavor on the big loop. Go ahead, Endeavor. Chris, we just uh, can't thank you enough. It's been an honor and a privilege to be part of Expedition 63 with you, Anatoly, and Ivan. It's been a great two months, and we appreciate uh, all you've done as a crew to help us uh, prove out Dragon on its uh, maiden flight. I'd also like to thank uh, Zeb and his team in Mission Control in Houston for the incredible amount of work they did to uh, make the dock to ops successful for Dragon, and also the teams at SpaceX that uh, keep us going towards the end of our mission that we look forward to splash down tomorrow. I'd also like to wish you a, a great success on the rest of your expedition and a safe flight Sounds home good. in the fall. Take care, friend. Saying their goodbyes and that's it. So that was the undocking from the ISS yesterday. And uh, now I have something that is pretty interesting. That is this picture. That is demo mission one after re-entry. And as you can see, it is like a marshmallow right there. It looks absolutely awful. Uh, well, actually, it looks like intended. But if you if you look at it before and after, you can pretty much tell how hot the the re-entry gets. That is absolutely incredible. And there you can see, like I said, it's the Crew Dragon from demo mission one, and it's sitting on the deck of uh, Go Navigator. So that's that's what what it's going to look like today as well, hopefully. And so we have another one here. That is a picture from John Winkop. He took the picture uh, in April. That was um, a test recovery, practice operation, uh, where they tested um, the recovery of the capsule out of, out of the water. So that is what we should see today. And uh, of course, I have a picture of the, of the ship. Give me a second. There, no, no. There we go. That's a picture I took in March, and that is Go Navigator in the harbor next to Go Quest and uh, Go Searcher. And uh, the, the the ship in front is the one that's gonna uh, fish the capsule out of the water. So that's gonna be really exciting to see. Okay, um, so that is my awesome media screen that I'll hopefully use more in the future um, to show you stuff that is interesting. Okay, let's switch back here. Uh, they are still just showing pictures from inside the capsule and telling you basically what I just told you. 11 minutes and 22 seconds for the re-entry burn, exactly. So um, let's listen in here real quick again to see Dragon what they have to say. by the nose cone following the deorbit burn. And as we've said before, that deorbit burn is what commits them to coming home. When that happens, that capsule is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And that'll put them essentially on a collision course with planet Earth. It, it lines up their, their orbit uh, to intersect with that splashdown point in the Gulf of Mexico. It's just so beautiful to see them sit there in the capsule waiting, waiting for everything to, to unfold, basically. They are, like I said, they are passengers on the capsule right now because everything is automated in the re-entry process they they can stop the automated process in an emergency but the capsule does everything on its own which is very very impressive in my opinion and uh yeah 
It's beautiful to see. I, I, I can't get enough of this. I've been watching this the whole day, basically. Uh, if you've got more questions, shoot them out. I'll try to answer a few more. And while um, we have just a few more minutes until we get to that, we still have some questions coming in. Again, yeah, if you have they're one, answering jump over questions on Twitter well. use the hashtag AskNAP. So let me turn that down a little this bit here. Comes from Scare of Survivor. We want okay. Um, wait. Volume bars. There we go. Okay. Um... Jay Del Delpin is asking, when will Crew Dragon begin to encounter friction? Um, like I said, right after the re-entry burn. Uh, the re-entry burn gets the capsule into um, uh, into co contact with the atmosphere, basically. So the, the, the Draco thruster is shut off and uh, like, I don't know the exact time, but immediately after the re-entry burn is finished, the capsule turns around, uh, readjusts the heat shields, uh, the heat shield forward and then uh, uh, gets first um, aerodynamic effects on the capsule. That rises up and up and up, of course, as, uh, as the atmosphere gets denser and denser and uh, up to the point where the whole capsule is engulfed in plasma because it is so hot. And uh, that's when we won't get any of these pictures because uh, the, the comm link will ter uh, shut down because uh, it can't go through all the plasma that builds up around the capsule so and that should take around six minutes um bingo fuel is asking how long till atmosphere re-entry um you are really interested in times um <clears throat> like i said <clears throat> we have the uh trunk and claw separation coming up in about 22 minutes from now if i'm correct and uh once that's done the capsule will do the re-entry burn and uh um then reorient itself towards the atmosphere and then uh, um, re-enter parachute sequence. And the landing will be 1848 UTC. Um, that is the latest information there. Um, so that should be rather correct because it came from SpaceX themselves. Um, question from Fritz van Leersum. Uh, fairing has no heat shield. How does uh, it survive? Oh, it's much slower. and. Uh, um, it, it, the capsule re-enters at a speed of 17,500 miles per hour uh, in, in metric and 28,000 kilometers per hour in uh, uh, the other way around, Imperial, and 28,000 kilometers per hour in metric. And uh, so the fairings are much, much slower because they are not on an orbit. They are on a ballistic flight. Um, they don't need a re-entry burn either to get down. Uh, the capsule is so fast that if you do, wouldn't do a re-entry burn, it would stay up. That's how much faster it is. And the fairings just need to be separated and then they're, they're on the ground 45 minutes roughly after separation. And uh, so they are much, much slower. That's why they don't need the heat shield. But if uh, SpaceX has released uh, beautiful footage of fairings re-entering and you can see quite a bit of plasma um, forming around the... Uh, uh, the the fairings while they re-enter, but it is nothing comparable to what the capsule will have to endure uh, with uh, with these high speeds. That is the main main difference there. Uh, good question, thank you. Eli Reich, can I launch a rocket from Germany? No, uh, amateur rockets you can launch, but the problem is Germany does not have uh, the law system in place for uh, rocket launches. That I I did an interview with Peter Beck before from Rocket Lab. And uh, he said that was the biggest problem that he had um, when he wanted to launch rockets out of New Zealand is the law system. If that, oh, hi, hey, that's, that's my son. <laughs> Alex, ich bin gerade am Arbeiten. Du kannst hier nicht rein. Komm mit. Nein, 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 nein. Du gehst bitte wieder nach unten. Hopp. Hopp nach unten. Lauf. Jo, ich hab dich lieb. Geh, lauf mal zu Mama. Jo. Geh, geh mal zu Mama. Lauf zu Mama. Ich hab dich lieb. Machst du die Türe zu? Türe zu? Ja. Danke sehr. <laughs> that was my son, the youngest one. I have three kids and the youngest one is two years old and uh, he sometimes disturbs me in my streams, but that's okay. He's allowed to. Okay, so what, I, what was I talking about? Can I launch a rocket from Germany? Exactly. So the problem is the law system. If you want to, if a, a country does not support launches yet and you want to start launching rockets, you have to have a law system. The problem is it's pretty dangerous to launch 
uh, large commercial rockets. If you do something wrong, everything explodes. And you, you have the best example is you have oxidizer right next to the fuel. And uh, so the, you have to have lots of laws in place to be able to launch. And Germany doesn't have that right now. That's the, the biggest problem. So no, you couldn't. Uh, but you could launch amateur rockets. Um, that's not the the problem if you uh, if you don't go too high. Um, but for anything else, we would have to get the law system in place. And that takes some time and is rather a hassle normally. And uh, like I said, uh, Peter Beck told me a little bit about that. I have an interview about it on my channel if you want to uh, look it up. And uh, it's pretty interesting that that actually was a problem for Rocket Lab when they wanted to launch out of New Zealand. And that's the cat, by the way. <laughs> so I've got a full room here right now. Okay, good question. Thank you. Um, they are still answering questions on the SpaceX stream, so I'll do the same thing. Um, we have Job Gamer. Uh, what year do you think humans will first land on Mars? Hmm. Earliest, maybe um, 2024, but realistically, later than that. Um, because NASA is not planning any Mars landings uh, for for the 2030s. And if SpaceX wants to do it, they'll have to get uh, the human starship um, up there, which is a big difference compared to the tankers and the cargo ships. And it needs a lot of uh, systems and uh, infrastructure in place. So my realistic timeline would be more towards the late... 2020s, maybe early 2030s. That is the realistic time frame right now. But uh, yeah, anything crude. Um, cargo, maybe earlier, but uh, crude, that'll take some time. Okay, uh, give me a second here. I have to I have to shout out a lot of people who have given me super chats. And I thank you, thank you, thank you. And I don't want to miss, miss it this time because... Um, I have done a terrible job on the last live stream with that. So sorry, sorry. Okay, Robson Souza gave me a super chat. Thank you very much. Um, and there was a coffee mug animation uh, one of my moderators sent me. So that's the coffee money. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, go bogey hole troll. Thank you for the super chat. Could the deorbit burn be bright enough to be visible from the ground in southern Australia? Uh... <clears throat> Well, it's night over there. Um, it could be. Uh, the burn was... The, I don't think that the uh, deorbit burn would be visible. Maybe, but that is not for Australia. Maybe the re-entry is visible because that should get quite bright. But uh, the deorbit burn, I don't think so. And I think for the re-entry burn... Uh, for the for the for the re-entry of the capsule itself, Australia is not in the right place. You would have to be somewhere Hawaii or even further. So I don't. I maybe check it. It would be awesome to see. That's for sure. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Julian Cohen. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Hey Felix, you will continue transmitting the hop of serial number five. I will, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to do it today. I know Reddit and everybody is going crazy about a Starship hop today, but um, publicity and media-wise, it would be the worst thing to do for SpaceX because they have a. Uh, something going on here going on here today and uh, that has the coverage of the whole world on it and it would be kind of strange if they would uh, because they will want to have the starship hop in the media if it's successful and i'm pretty sure they're going to do a live stream about it too because they did that with the star hopper as well so with cameras on the pad maybe a nice drone flight or something and i don't think they're going to do that at the same time the crew dragon comes down but if I'll have a long night <laughs> because I will definitely try to, to stream the star uh, the 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 starship hop, but uh, like I said, I'm I wouldn't be too sure that that happens today. So yeah, okay. Um, Starman Steve, thank you for the super chat. Great work. Is the re-entry burn occurring over Australia? It should be. It should be over Australia. Yes, but uh, like somebody else has asked. Uh, like Bo Bogey Hole Troll asked, um, I think it's not going to be bright enough to see it from the ground. It's just Draco thrusters and they don't have that much uh, coming out of them. And so I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see that from the ground. Could try it though. 
Uh, Frank Mahovilch, thank you very much for the super chat. DJ Dino Mike, thank you for the super chat. Can we get a Discord link on members only YouTube page? Uh, yes. Uh, if you if you are if you become a member of the channel or a Patreon, you get access to the Discord. It is behind a paywall to keep the trolls out, and you you get the Discord access at one dollar per month, which really isn't that much money, and it keeps out everybody who doesn't really want to be in there, you know? So the, the, the community on the Discord is absolutely awesome. And if you want to join that, um, you can do so, but you don't need a link. You just need to become a member and then link it. If you do it through YouTube, you need to link your YouTube account in the Discord app and it'll find out, out automatically that you're a member and give you the access to the channel. And if you're, if you're joining through Patreon, you'll have to um, link your YouTube account in Patreon in the account settings. Um, there's an app tab and if you click on that, you have a YouTube option and if you punch in your account there, et voila, you get access to the Discord. So you don't need a link. It should work without. If you have trouble with that, try to reach one of the moderators. They'll gladly help you out. Thank you for the super chat. And Mike, another super chat. My daughter wants to know if the mass simulator is coming home as well. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, this guy <laughs> is coming home as well. And uh, I've heard rumors that even the zero G uh, simulator, the, the little earth is coming home as well on this flight. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But this guy is coming home. Oh, definitely. I, I even have two of them. If you, if you look, uh, if you look, there is another bigger one. I love them. <laughs> and my kids have one as well. <laughs> so I'm a I'm a fanboy of Doug and Bob. That's for sure. Elliot Turner, I don't know what to say. I'm absolutely, uh, I, I just saw the number and you're absolutely crazy and I thank you for being crazy. And uh, that is go directly going to go into the production of the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for what you, you do, Felix, you rock. Yeah, you, you rock, thank you. Um, happy hacking video blog, I know that one. Uh, the original Dragon design included propulsion landing. It seems NASA preferred to replace it by traditional parachutes. I wonder if the capsule still has software for propulsive landing in case of ex extreme emergency. SpaceX has been has been asked that before, and I know that the answer was no. Um, the reason for that is that they don't even want it to accidentally fire because it is not uh, licensed for that. They have no permission to do it. And I think too that it was a glorious idea to have a, a, a Crew Dragon land with uh, the Super Draco thrusters, but uh, it's no, it's no go for NASA. So the parachutes are uh, what they're what they're doing, and I'm I'm pretty sure that even the code is 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 gone. Um. Ah, uh, that uh, my moderators are asking me if I can do a timer to I could do a timer to splash down. I could do that. Give me a second. Um, so that should be. <clears throat> and this one. And start. And. Ta da! And it's right on my head. Okay, so this is wrong because it doesn't have the. Give me a second. I'll I'll fix it. Right, so this needs a. Uh, this. Ha! There you go. That should. should no. Nah, give me a second. Uh, 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 should be correct. Why is it just saying? Is that is that so close already? One hour and eight minutes. That should be the correct time. Oh my God! I'm shocked. We're we're almost, we're almost landing already. I think this is correct. Please correct me if it's if it's wrong. But I think it's correct. Um. Okay. Um. Let me read some more super. You guys are crazy, by the way, with the super chats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what to say. Uh, Dragon design, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we had that. So no, uh, I, uh, the capsule is not capable of landing with the Super Dracos, even though it would have been awesome. Julian Cohen, thank you for the super chat. Can you put serial number five live on this webcast? We are seeing you with my grandfather. Could you say you rock Juan Gorbaran? I, I hope I didn't butcher that name too much. Uh, thank you for watching the live stream. I could put Lab Padre picture in picture here because I have 
I, I am allowed to do that. I asked Louis before if I can show his stream picture in picture. But right now we're focused on these two guys. So I'd rather not do it because it'll it'll be distracting. And what they are do going through here is absolutely epic. Um, let's real quick listen into what they're actually saying here. So I we don't miss too much. They're not saying much right now. Here's the audio. They are pretty quiet. All right, let's let's. Uh, they are blocking out some some radio there. Okay, uh, let's let's continue with a few more super chats here. Uh, uh, Ray Roberts, new member. Thank you very much. As I said, uh, link your. Uh, Go to the go to the Discord app. Link the, link your YouTube account in the Discord app, and you get access to the to the to the Discord server. Uh, Fat boy bangs. Thank you very much for the super chat. Tam Hewitt Baker. Thank you very very much for the super chat. I tried to see if Sinal had articles released to re-entry physics, but I didn't. Uh, where would you rec recommend I look for resources to learn more about that? Ooh. Um, maybe call SpaceX. <laughs> um, actually, there would be a few people on our Discord who could probably answer that to you. And I have uh, I have contact to a few Apollo astronauts who might know as well. I couldn't tell you though where you can find that online. So um, maybe send me an email with your questions, and I can I can try to find out uh, uh, if the if one of the moderators can put the contact email address into the chat, I'll try to find out for you. If I've got the time, I'm not promising. Uh, Jonathan Curtis, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Felix, after I send this, I will become a member. I love how you stay connected with your with your members and fans keep doing what you do. You rock. No, you rock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, and Ron gum. Uh, upgraded membership to, to new idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any support I get goes directly into the show and you can see it in results of better quality, basically. So I buy better equipment. I can actually pay more money to the animators who do an absolutely awesome job. And I try to pay as many of them as I can, even if they want to volunteer, because there's a lot of work going into this. Um, you can ask my two uh, regular animators, uh, and they didn't even ask for payment and I still do because it's absolutely awesome what they do on such a short notice for me because I release twice a week and so there's normally not that much time uh, that I can tell them I like Tim Dodd probably goes can you do this for me in two months I need the animation try again SpaceX for the orbit sequence yes and for me it's normally a day or two all right, Doug, we are five minutes out from the orbit sequence start. In addition, I uh, just wanted to inform you, we are expecting some ratty calm during claw and trunk set due to vehicle orientation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, let me let me okay, finish. Copy. We see 445 left for the uh, slew and then uh, ratty calm during the uh, claw set. Sounded like Doug Good early. Back, Doug. Awesome. All right, there still there still go and everything's happening. Um uh Ili Harad, thank you for the super chat. Uh, why going to have an office in Bokashika? Hopefully. <laughs> I would love to. Um the problem right now is really uh COVID going on. Um I wanted to visit in fall again, uh Florida and Bokashika. It's almost Hey, we are almost 4 minutes away from this starting. Yeah, we just heard the call out there, confirmation right, from SpaceX talk. core down here at Mission Control uh, to Crew Dragon that we now under five, but at the time of the call, five minutes away from deorbit sequence start. Uh, so like we've been mentioning before, that deorbit sequence will involve uh, separating from the trunk and performing the deorbit burn. Uh, as you may have noticed on your uh, the ground tracking map that we've been showing you before, Bob and Doug were in their last orbit around Earth. Uh, I, I can't remember what the number was that you, you quoted earlier, Dan, but they have done thousands of orbits around Earth during their two month uh, duration on station. So it is really exciting that the line that we see on that trajectory map uh, is no longer a, you yeah. know fully around it. They're, they're coming home. We're not, we're not seeing two lines showing what their next orbit is going to be. They are on their final orbit of planet Earth. 
Um, and this is their 1,024th orbit around our planet since they launched back in May uh, of Epic. earlier this year. So we're counting down. We're under three minutes away from that first maneuver, and that's going to be a slew, as you heard Doug radio down. Uh, and that's essentially we're going to change the attitude. We're going to use those Draco thrusters to essentially spin Dragon about 90 degrees to the side uh, so we can uh, jettison that trunk. Um, and that'll be done in, in the two <laughs> stages. We'll do the claw separation and then the trunk separation. <laughs> two minutes, 32 seconds, mm -hmm. and counting. This is where things really pick up. This is where we really commit to coming home. And this is where we're in kind of the final stages of Bob and Doug's trip in outer space. And pretty soon we'll be seeing them in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, well, yes. they are staying comfortable and continuing to monitor data and telemetry in the vehicle. Uh, Dragon is actually doing a couple of things itself to prepare for this deorbit sequence. Um, again, it's doing these things autonomously. Uh, it's isolating the thermal control system loops from the radiator. This is the system that will oh, yeah. help keep Bob and Doug cool uh, while they are re-entering the atmosphere. Like we've said before, the external temperature will reach 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and that thermal control system is uh, what helps keep them cool during that time. Also, Dragon is initiating uh, the separation of the claw mechanism, which will terminate the data, the power, and the, fluid and the fluid connections between the capsule and the trunk. So right now, the vehicle is preparing to execute that, and we are anticipating execution of claw separation uh, in three minutes and 35 seconds. So, <laughs> you know, we've been here for... <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours, hours, I think, at this point. Uh, the webcast as a whole has been going on for almost a little bit less than 24 hours. So, you know, we're in the final moments here as Dragon is beginning. It's, it's journey home uh, to bring Bob and Doug back to Earth. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is the moment that Dragon is in the position to start coming home. Uh, the recovery team's already on station. They have been for a while out there off the coast of Pensacola. We are less than a minute from starting all of these carefully choreographed sequences to essentially split Dragon in half, get rid of that trunk so we have the capsule. I'll point the heat shield back down towards Earth following that deorbit burn. And then we bring them home. We are and just about we bring 30 them seconds home. away now awesome. from maneuvering Dragon to get ready to get rid of that claw first and then that trunk separation. There will be about a 35 second difference uh, or 35 second jump from separating the claw to separating the trunk. And we'll keep our eyes on the ground track for you and make sure we get kind of exact locations of when these separation events are occurring. Uh, we're we're looking for both the claw and the trunk to separate cleanly. And then it'll be less than five minutes until we do the deorbit burn. Yeah, and after that, it'll just- Dragon SpaceX deorbit sequence start. Nice. All right. Great news. Okay, some, somebody just said that they're not wearing masks. Right, so the Draco thrusters on Dragon starting to fire. They have a plexiglass between them. Now moving its way them. over to the trunk jettison attitude. We should be about two minutes away from the claw separation. Yeah, now it's, now it's getting exciting. Awesome. All right, I was on point with my <laughs> trunk separation guess. Awesome. <laughs> uh, one and a half minutes left, I think. Yeah, there's Elon sitting. Oh, you're saying Elon doesn't wear a mask. Now I get it. No, he's not. Somebody's even filming him without the mask. For those of you that are just tuning in, you are just in time. <laughs> At this point in the mission, we are now beginning to execute the final steps of Dragon Endeavor's return to Earth. Uh, right now, we are performing the claw separation slew, which basically means Dragon is maneuvering itself into position, uh, into the proper attitude in order to separate the Dragon trunk. Uh, and that will be initiated first uh, by separation of the claw. The claw is the mechanism that attaches uh, the trunk and the, uh, excuse me, and the capsule together. The claw is what delivers power and telemetry and fluids, mm -hmm. and we need to. Okay, I'm going to turn her down real quick. Um, for those who are Starship fans, and I'm guessing there are quite a few here, Elon sitting there in Hawthorne, California, is the 100% 
uh, guarantee that there's not going to be hop tonight uh, because he wants to be on site when the hop happens. I'm pretty sure about that. And this early this morning, and this will be the final burn that the vehicle has to perform for this mission. And we just heard confirmation dragons in the trunk separation attitude. We are now standing by for claw separation. Yeah, so long as Elon looks calm, exactly. <laughs> and we just heard confirmation. Awesome. Trunk separation complete. Confirmation of claw separation. No, claw separation. Trunk separation is a different thing. But claw separated. We're now time. standing by for Roughly. the trunk separation in less than 30 seconds. Yep. Yep, Squin shot well next to him. Gwinny! <laughs> Absolutely epic. Ten seconds till trunk separation. Though technically, if everyone in that room wears a mask and Elon is the only one not wearing... Ah, see, now he's got a mask. See, there you go. You can calm down. And we just heard confirmation of trunk separation. The trunk separation coming at 10.52 a.m. Pacific with Dragon Perfect. flying over the Indian Ocean just off to the west of Australia. Dragon mm -hmm. SpaceX, we showed nominal trunk jettison. Perfect. Very nice. All right, that trunk will sink okay, down into the atmosphere them. and burn up. All right. So the crew just got the call, nominal trunk separation. That's exactly what we were looking for. Next up is going to be that D, that D orbit burn. Again, this is the longest burn of their trip home. This is the longest firing of those thrusters and the last time we're using yep. those forward bulkhead 11 thrusters. Minutes. Exactly. Uh, those forward bulkhead thrusters, like Dan just said, that's what we're using to perform the deorbit burn. Once we uh, do that, we will then be able, that deorbit burn will last for 11 and a half minutes. Once that is completed, we don't need to use those thrusters anymore. So we will close and lock the nose cone in preparation for re-entry. Awesome. Awesome. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Trunk is separated. And uh, now so the capsule turns. a little turns. under three and a half minutes from the start of the deorbit burn. Again, our sequence of events has started. We we're able to separate that claw at 10.51 a.m. Pacific. At 17.51 GMT or Universal Time. And then at 10.52, just a minute later, the trunk separating while Dragon was flying just off to the west of Australia. So claw separated, trunk separated. Next up, the orbit burn. Awesome. Yeah, right now, uh, Dragon is running exclusively on battery power now that the trunk is separated. Also, right now, uh, telemetry is looking really good for the vehicle. Uh, the nitrox system is primed for cabin and suit cooling, and the heat shield is exposed and ready for atmos atmospheric re-entry. Like I said before, that nitrox system, which is uh, essentially the air that we breathe every day down here on Earth, uh, nitrogen, oxygen combination, a mi mixture. Uh, it's the same stuff that they put in your scuba tank if you are a scuba diver. Uh, the nitrox system is used to cool the cabin and the suit uh, to keep the crew comfortable during the re-entry phase. Uh, they will actually have cold air flowing through the, their suits themselves, uh, as well as through the cabin itself. So a two-pronged approach to maintaining a comfortable, a comfortable temperature there inside the capsule. Uh, like we said, uh, the next event that we have coming up will be the deorbit burn, uh, which we're expecting that to commence in one minute and 40 seconds. Awesome. Okay, there you go. That's your answer. One minute and 40 seconds until deorbit burn. Ah, beautiful. This is so exciting. I'm so happy that everybody's watching this with me. It's always a pleasure to do this. Thank you for joining me, people. This is an epic, epic thing to happen. The first crew dragon with Bob and Dog on board, coming down from their journey. According to the ground tracking map there, Dragon is approaching the southwestern coast of Australia. 
So if you're at the southwest coast of Australia and you want to see if you can see the deorbit burn, now's your time. Get outside <laughs> and see if you can spot it. <laughs> I've done that before with uh, Starlink missions and I've We're done less it here. Than a... We're excited. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> we are inside a minute to deorbit burn. And it's really worth it. It really Again, is. One more time. This is this is the long one. This is expected to last 11 minutes, 22 seconds. This is that burn that commits the dragon to re-enter in the Earth's atmosphere. And you can get kind of a sense of just how far they're going to go. Well, By the time they fire this burn, they're just going to be off to the southwest of Australia. And this is going to realign their orbit to intersect with that point off the coast of Pensacola where they're going to be splashing down. Yeah, this is the moment where Dragon is fully committed to the re-entry point. Uh, we, again, we are aiming for just off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. Our recovery ship Go Navigator is ready and waiting to begin the recovery process right after splashdown occurs. Once again, uh, if you're just joining us, we are now in the final steps of the deorbit sequence. Uh, the deorbit burn will be starting here in just a couple of seconds. Okay, one second. Uh, I just. Oh, we had, we just had confirmation. The orbit burn has begun. 10:56 a.m. Pacific. Again, while the Dragon spacecraft just off the southwestern coast of Australia. So here we go. <laughs> Eleven awesome. more minutes to go. I'm ready, awesome. and uh, I'm I'm sure it's safe to say that Bob and Doug are ready. Come they on, they've done a number of interviews over the last few weeks while they were on station. And just the excitement and the enthusiasm for the mission is, is palpable. Uh, just the opportunity to be able to fly these yes. two incredible humans to the International Space Station and back is such an honor. And uh, we're just really excited to get our space dads home safely and back to their families as quickly as possible. Yeah, agreed. All right. This deorbit burn that we are currently in, it will last 11 minutes and 22 seconds. Ah, I should have started the timer at the time. Already a little more than a minute 10 in counting, so we have about 10 minutes to go. Just heard a call. The propulsion system performing nominally. That's the word we always want to hear, we always like to hear. Just under 10 minutes to go left in this burn. Awesome. And all within the last 10 minutes, again, it seemed like we had slow progress of events all morning and then boom, within the last 10 minutes, we had a couple of things happening. Uh, Dragon maneuvered itself into the appropriate position to jettison its trunk. Uh, and it did so successfully, nominally. And then it initiated the deorbit burn just a couple minutes ago. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this deorbit burn is the last time those four forward Draco thrusters will fire. Forward kind of meaning at the top of the capsule. Dragon Endeavor has not yet entered Earth's atmosphere, but this deorbit burn is what will line the vehicle up and put it on its final trajectory to the landing site in the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, uh, yeah. although we can't see it at the moment, Bob and Doug are yes. using their screens to keep tabs on the burn duration. Uh, Draco fire, excuse me, Draco thruster firings and trajectory details, such as entry angle, capsule perigee, and how much distance is remaining until that deorbit burn terminates. So Dragon is flying itself, so all they really have to do is stay strapped in their seats and keep tabs, keep tabs on things. And cross the fingers, very important. <laughs> okay, so they are not saying anything right now, but as soon as they start saying something, I'm gonna uh, shut up again because it's it, like she said, it's it's really epic what's happening right now. Um, we have a new member, Techno Drone. Thank you very much, Mrs. Min. Thank you for the super chat. How do you? So while this burn is completing again, we're just a few minutes into it. It'll last 11 minutes and 22 seconds. How do you program? Uh, we, we have a couple more events coming up uh, afterward in, uh, let's, let me check my timeline here real quick. In 40, just under 44 minutes, uh, we will have the initial parachute deployment. So uh, that is essentially when we will be deploying the drogue parachutes, the small parachutes that are designed to uh, further slow down the capsule as, as it is re-entering the atmosphere, as well as stabilizing it. 
And then a minute after that, we will deploy the drogue parachutes. And that is targeted for 11.44 a.m. Pacific, 18.44 uh, Universal. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple minutes after that, we will have splashdown. 18.44. Yeah, and then after that, so again, that's all down. in okay. just under 45, 44 minutes. Right now, we are performing the deorbit burn. Okay, I'm, I'm got a little over seven minutes left in this burn. Turn her down real quick here. Um, how do you program the reaction of the carbon, the cartoon robot in your videos? The cartoon robot? It's the Starman. He, he he flew up with the with the roadster and then he jumped down again and he entered my studio because he has a job to do here. So that's the the the, the, the cartoon robot. It's the Starman, and uh, it's separate elements of animations that we arrange while editing the videos. Awesome questions. Question. Thank you. Line of velocity <laughs> and that heat shield protecting them from the, the heat of reentry. Uh, temperatures getting up to about 3,500 degrees uh, on the Dragon spacecraft. But everything looking good. We're about five minutes into this deorbit burn. Again, it started right at 10:56 a.m. Pacific time. Great. 17:56 uh, 56 GMT. Uh, Dragon was flying about 260 statute miles uh, just off the southwestern coast of Australia. Awesome. Okay, uh, Alex Jobs, thank you very, very much for the super chat. If you're wondering who did the intro video, the new intro that I'm having on my episodes is that guy. So thank him on the chat. He's absolutely awesome. Thank you, thank you. Um, Steve Jordan B. Peterson 5HR Lecture. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you very, very so right much. Right now, during this burn, the. <laughs> We just heard a call that we're halfway through the burn and everything is looking great. Everything awesome. performing nominally. Uh, during this burn right now, Bob and Doug are currently monitoring the deorbit tool, which, like I said earlier, uh, captures things like the perigee, the uh, reentry interface, uh, how much time, or excuse me, how many mile, how much distance remains uh, before the burn itself uh, is terminated. They're also monitoring the burn duration and uh, the firing of those Draco thrusters located there at the f uh, on the forward bulkhead of the capsule. Uh, there on your screen, you actually can see what Bob and Doug are seeing right now. Uh, that is that tool on their screen. So uh, on the left and the right of the center screen, uh, that is the deorbit uh, that that is the deorbit monitor monitoring tool. Mm. As long as nothing bad happens okay um happy hacking video blog thank you for the super chat i keep mishearing pepsi cola <laughs> okay um thank you miko for the super chat you're absolutely awesome framrick thank you for the super chat go bob and dog thanks felix yeah go bob and dog absolutely um it should be a cool t-shirt go bob and dog i'm so stoked right now this is incredible Just seven minutes into the burn a little over four minutes remaining Everything's still looking good with Dragon Ship Endeavor's Dior of Burn to commit it to coming home. Everything continuing to be on track for our splashdown. Again, our splashdown yes. time uh, right at 11.48 and 24 seconds uh, Pacific was the calculated time. Uh, when Down to the it second. It would be typical if we're a couple seconds on either side, uh, but that time is 18.48 GMT or Universal. But we're... We're already through several of the really major steps to initiate this re-entry. The claw is separated, the trunk is gone. The deorbit burn has begun, and we're more than halfway through, just a little under three and a half minutes remaining. Yeah, somebody just asked on the on the chat why the 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 flip open cap on top is still open, and that's because the Draco thrusters are under that cap. If they would close the cap, they couldn't do the re-entry burn. So the cap will close as soon as the re-entry burn is done, because then the Draco thrusters have done their job. They won't fire again. And on your screen is a shot of our mission control center here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, where the Dragon operators and mission leaders are there monitoring Dragon's progress. They continue to watch the propulsion data and all the GNC data, uh, making sure that everything is looking healthy and nominal. So that's why the cap is still open. As soon as the burn is done, 
the capsule will the the cap will close, lock up, and the capsule would reorient orient itself. We're with just the, about two minutes thirty seconds until the end of this burn. We'll listen for the call out up to the crew uh, on the performance of the burn, and then they'll start moving into the next steps. Again, we'll get about a three minute breather before the next major milestone comes up when we get ready to close the nose cone, uh, that protecting the docking ring, guidance, navigation, and control uh, sensors, and also these four forward bulkhead thrusters that are currently performing the deorbit burn. There you go. Uh, during the actual reentry process. So we are at just under two minutes from the conclusion of the deorbit burn. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry too much about Elon's mask. If everybody else is Again, wearing Dragon a mask... Again, Dragon is committed to its splashdown point. There is no going back. Yeah, we already have the recovery team ready and on standby. They've been there uh, for quite some time now. <laughs> um, exactly. Here, and we have about 90 seconds left in the burn. Weather looking great at the splashdown site off Pensacola. Uh, winds yes. uh, just around two and a half miles per hour. Very uh, sea being described as like glass by awesome. the core here Perfect. in Hawthorne, radioing up to the crew. Ended up getting fantastic weather for this first crude splashdown of Dragon. We are one minute away from the end of deorbit burn. Absolutely awesome. Again, this burn is placing Dragon on its final yes. trajectory to the landing site off of the coast of Pensacola, Florida. That is in the Gulf of Mexico. And our recovery vessel, Go Navigator, and the recovery team are ready and waiting to see Bob and Doug come back through the atmosphere. Jonathan, thank you for the membership. Thomas Cook, uh, I, I totally agree. SpaceX is like doing an awesome job. Like we said, awesome this orbit burn, uh, during this deorbit burn, they're not actually re-entering the atmosphere just yet. Uh, that won't happen for about another half hour or so. This is essentially just lining up Dragon on the right course to that splashdown site. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, still in an altitude of about 254 statute miles over planet Earth. We are coming up on 10 seconds from the end of the burn. So we'll stand by and wait for the call out to the crew on the burn performance. 39 minutes left until they're down. Yes. Okay, this is more exciting than anything. Uh, well, Perseverance was, was really exciting, but this is, I think it's a bit more because it's just... Dragon, SpaceX, deorbit burn complete, performance nominal, nose Perfect. cone closure initiated. Yes. Nominal Check. Burn, nose cone inward. Nose cone inwards. Okay. Let's see if that thing locks up. was open for two months. All right. The orbit burn complete. We heard the call, nominal burn. Bob and Doug are on their way back home. This burn commits them to re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Oof, all, there, all we have <laughs> left now is to wait. That was really one of the last major moments uh, before they start re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, we'll have the nose cone closure coming up next. That's very uh, important. That should be coming uh, in just a couple of minutes as uh, we had about a three-minute span uh, between the end of the Dior River and in that moment. Yeah, the nose cone is actually currently in the closing process, so it doesn't just snap shut. Uh, it does slowly close and uh, lock. So right now, that nose cone is in the process of moving of it, moving back into the closed position. And uh, we will hear the call out for whenever it has fully closed and whenever uh, the latches have secured. Awesome. Rin Tin Tin, thank you very, very much for the super chat. Data, it looks like it's about halfway there. Uh, it's open a little bit more than 90 degrees. I think the, the exact count was 110 degrees uh, opening range or range of motion for the nose cone. Uh, so we're a little more than halfway now to getting that nose cone closed. Perfect. You've missed a bit, but not the important part. So you're here in time. You're you're here right before the re-entry, actually. The timer shows you uh, the touchdown time. By so the I have way. just heard that we have a visual on nose cone closure. So it'll take a minute for the hooks to close in. They close in uh, a series, so the first series will close and then the second will follow, and that'll take about a minute to complete. Perfect. 
Pavel, I thank you very, very much for the super chat. Hi from Switzerland. Love your work. And I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's much appreciated. These live streams are always the best way to communicate with the community, to connect, connect with everybody who watches my stuff. And uh, I appreciate it that you're that you're all here tonight to watch this epic thing to unfold. It's 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 going to be really, really cool. And I'm so looking forward to seeing them on the ground again. All right, well, as we just wait for the finish to that nose cone closure, uh, we'll have a bit of time again. We'll have about 20 minutes uh, or a little, little over 21 from right now until we really start re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. We're expecting that entry interface uh, in about 21 minutes. And then right around that time, we'll also be looking for that blackout we've been talking about. Uh, we've had a little bit of what we call ready calm at this point. So you'll hear kind of some sporadic uh, interruptions in the audio transmission just because of how Dragon was oriented um, for the, uh, the trunk jettison and for the actual deorbit burn. Uh, but that, that blackout period will be due to the plasma that builds up around the capsule, uh, interfering with those antennas either sending or receiving data. Mm -hmm. Heiner Wolf, thank you very much for the, or Heiner Wolf, because it is dollars. Thank you I've very, very much for the super the chat. The first set of okay, hooks for nose cone closure are in motion. So these, this will complete in two sets. The first set is now in motion. So really good news to hear that. Everything looking good so far. Okay, everyone. Like I um, mentioned before, okay. uh, in the background, Dragon has uh, inhibited the forward uh, bulkhead Draco thrusters that we just used to complete that deorbit burn. Uh, this is to ensure that it's safe to latch that nose cone shut for reentry. Also, the vehicle has initiated the nitrox purge. Nitrox is simply Perfect. a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. It's what we breathe. Uh, and the, the nit nitrox that is being purged into the system is cooled. Uh, so allowing that cool air to circulate around the cabin, but also inside of Bob and Doug's suits uh, will help to keep them cool and comfortable during re-entry. And they need that. Uh, which will be coming up in about 20 minutes. Everyone, while you're here, like the stream that helps Currently everybody else to find it. 23 minutes and 20 seconds until entry begins. Yep, that's absolutely correct, Mark. O2 enhanced air. It's the same stuff as you In case you're just joining us at this point, the nose cone has closed. The forward thrusters have been, uh, have been disabled and we are latching the nose cone currently underway with the first set of hooks. The first of two sets. It's the same stuff that you would find in the scuba diver tank. So that is uh, really interesting that they're using exactly the same and thing. And we just had confirmation that the first set of hooks is closed. So now the second, the second set will begin to close as well. Perfect. That is a very important step, actually. If that uh, nose doesn't uh, attach properly, it's not very good. So this is very important. As we mentioned, after this nose cone's fully closed, we'll have a couple of minutes to catch our breath again, about 20 minutes or just under 20 minutes until Dragon will start to maneuver itself to the entry attitude essentially pointing the minutes. heat shield in the direction of travel as it's going to be leading the way through their re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, we'll look to uh, run into that communications blackout at about 36 minutes after the hour, expecting that to last for about six minutes. And then we'll get that back shortly before we uh, deploy the drogue parachutes, followed uh, just less than a minute later by the main parachutes. And by that point, hopefully, we should have some views of Dragon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and parachuting to a splashdown in the Gulf. Perfect. So we got a final answer now, and I might have been a little bit off with the aerodynamic forces after the re-entry burn. He was talking about 20 minutes, so it might take a moment. I'm really hoping right now that the nose cone will attach properly, um, because then after that, not much can go wrong. 
the parachute sequences. So there in the sequences. front row of Mission Control in the center, you can see CEO Elon Musk and our President Gwen Shotwell yep. sitting side by side at those center consoles. In addition to those two, the room is filled with Dragon operators and mission leaders who are continuing to monitor the health and telemetry of the crew and the capsule. Right now, nose cone closure is underway. The first of two sets of hook latching has completed. And we just heard a call Dragon out that the nose cone. SpaceX, co nose cone is secure for entry. Perfect. Flawless. Very, very nice. Happy, we see it on board. All right, great confirmation there. Back and forth from Mission Control here to Bob and Doug up in Dragon Endeavor. Yes. Uh, that Bob and Doug have can also confirmed on their displays that the nose cone has closed nominally and it is secure for entry. Woohoo! Perfect. All right, they're still good to go. Uh, Bull Jaguar 54. So Thank clone. you. Nose cone close completion. A lot of tongue twisters with this right now uh, coming. Uh, with Dragon still flying over the South Pacific, uh, it is on its way home. We're going to gradually start to see its altitude dip. Uh, right now, yes. already only 207 miles over the Earth's surface. It was at about 260 miles when it was still uh, over on the other side of the Pacific Ocean off the southwestern coast of Australia when it fired its engines for that deorbit burn. Uh, so its altitude going to continue to drop. Uh, once it gets to uh, about 100 kilometers in altitude or about 62 miles, um, it's going to begin what's known as entry interface. And that's when it really begins to start to feel uh, the effects of the Earth's atmosphere. We'll once again be experiencing lift and drag uh, as it's no longer in that near vacuum environment in low Earth orbit. Perfect. That's a good answer there. So it's 100 kilometers between now and serious effects of the atmosphere. So we got a very clear answer from SpaceX there. Um, thank you, everybody, for the super chats. It's really hard for me to shout them out right now, but I, I so see this. We're essentially stepping into the second awesome. half thank you. of entry. Dragon is now beginning to flush nitrox into the cabin and continuing to top it off in Bob and Doug's suits as well. Again, this is cool air essentially flowing through the cabin and the suits. Uh, this is what will allow them and the cabin itself to remain comfortable uh, during re-entry while those external temperatures reach 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point in time, Dragon's orientation is such that the heat shield is pointing forward, if you will, uh, leading the capsule toward the landing site. Okay, real quick, I, I, I have to shout out these people. Um, uh, Reto Tosoni, thank you very much. David Willis, thank you. Joe, thank you very much. Um, Happy Hacking membership, thank you very much. Um, Men in the Making, thank you very, very much. Why don't they show the crew and capsule cams? You rock, Felix. Uh, they will. Um, F. Allen 46, thank you. Matt M, thank you very much. Joseph Murray, thank you for the membership. Sirx Russo, thank you for the membership. Um, if the moderators could real quick uh, give a short instruction on how to um, join our Discord so everybody finds their way there, that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, and it's easy to see how determining that landing site is a it's quite a complex process. Uh, since Dragon is capable of splashdown on either side of the Florida panhandle, uh, we in fact have two identical and fully equipped recovery vessels ready to support. Uh, one in the Gulf of Mexico, which is what we're utilizing today, Go Navigator, mm -hmm. and the other located uh, off the east coast of Florida, able to service landing sites in the Atlantic Ocean. That one is Go Searcher. Yep. Like I mentioned, today we'll be splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. Go Navigator, that recovery ship I just mentioned, is in place and ready and waiting for Bob and Doug. Uh, the WB-57 plane, if it hasn't taken off already, I'm sure it will be very soon. It's, uh, yep, it's in the air. Okay, great. Uh, that's what will provide our first views of Dragon during re-entry. We'll get a thermal mm, cam off wait. of that airplane, allowing us to see the capsule as it is re-entering the atmosphere. 
if you were tuned in for our demo one broadcast, uh, there it, it was basically a, a big ball of light <laughs> coming <laughs> at us. We'll also have cameras on board the recovery vessel. So as Dragon gets closer, uh, we and is, is deploying those parachutes, we will also be able to have hopefully some really clear footage of that all occurring as well. 27 minutes to go. We're very, very close now. Thank you, right, thank so you Dragon's for the Dragon's altitude continuing to dip. Right now about 174 miles over planet Earth. We're under 11 and a half minutes from where we expect to hit entry interface. So that's where Dragon will really start feeling the effects of being in a denser atmosphere. Um, and then we are still tracking that blackout to come uh, right around that same time. We are under 27 minutes away from splashdown. So, so we're under 32. 27 minutes away from Bob and Doug being on planet Earth for the first time since May 30th. To kind of put everything in perspective, uh, you know, the Dragon capsule departed from the International Space Station several hours ago. Uh, but according to what Dan just said, it's essentially halfway home just based on altitude alone. So the International Space Station is about 250 miles above Earth's surface. I think right now it's between 250 and 300. I think right now it's about 263 miles uh, above Earth's surface. So based on uh, that telemetry that, that Dan just read off is from an altitude standpoint, Dragon is halfway home <laughs> and yet that second half is going to be covered in the next 27-ish minutes uh, while we wait for a splashdown and recovery versus the several hours that we've been covering since yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Phasing burns take much longer. Yeah. We will continue to see its speed drop as it's dropping out of orbit. It's starting to hit the atmosphere. It's starting to slow from the effects of that friction, uh, generating the heat on the heat shield and building up the plasma eventually around the spacecraft. Its speed's gonna continue to drop. It's already below 17,000 miles an hour and it'll drop to essentially a terminal velocity of about 350 miles an hour right as those drogue chutes deploy. And those are gonna pop out uh, when sensors on the Dragon spacecraft, uh, both GPS and pressure sensors, tell the spacecraft it's at the right altitude and then those will automatically deploy. Those drogues coming out of the top section of the spacecraft uh, using two mortars, or pyrotechnics essentially, to deploy those to do the initial slowing and stabilizing of the Dragon capsule. Yeah, then after that, the main parachutes will pop out and further decelerate it to about 119 miles per hour. Uh, and then that will continue to decelerate. And by the time that the capsule is splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico, it's only going 15, 16 miles per hour. So yeah. significant reduction in speed there uh, over, over just the course of a couple minutes. Uh, that, of course, is you know, a pretty comfortable speed. Uh, the way that the uh, astronauts have described it uh, previously with other, other types of missions also landing down uh, doing land landings at about the same rate. They said it feels like you're in a, a, a minor fender bender. <laughs> yeah, okay. you're definitely running into something. You'll feel it, but uh, they do a lot of work uh, with the seats and the restraints with these crew members just to make sure uh, while it may be a fender bender, you got more than a seat belt essentially holding you in. So they are they're very secure in their suits and in their seats, and they're going to stay in there even after Dragon touches down. We'll still have communication with Dragon. Uh, once they're in the water, it'll stay powered on. Uh, probably most importantly, the air conditioner will continue to work uh, while they're in the capsule uh, in the now Gulf of Mexico in much warmer temperatures than uh, they've seen for uh, the last couple of months. Uh, and we'll still be able to talk to them from here in Hawthorne, and the recovery teams will be able to as well. Yeah. I hope that it's not one of the ice things we the might ISS. see them do, uh, depending on uh, sea states and everything after they touch down and the crew themselves. Uh, they'll still have a couple of demonstration tasks potentially to carry out. Uh, they have a satellite phone inside of the capsule that has its own uh, satellite antenna integrated into Dragon and they are able to use that independent of Dragon's communication system. So uh, one thing we might hear them do is do a test call on that to the teams here uh, in Hawthorne. We wouldn't be able to hear the call, but you would hear the, uh, the go to do it over the Dragon to ground audio that we've been listening to this entire time. So 
still have a couple of demonstration steps, essentially, as, again, this is a test flight. This is the flight to really prove out Dragon systems, to bring yeah. crew members from Kennedy Space Center to the space station and return them safely to Earth. And so far, we have had a flawless ride downhill. We've completed the deorbit burn. Dragon is continuing to drop down. It's right now at about 132 miles over the Pacific Ocean. Pretty soon, we're going to wow. see its ground track cross over Central America, out over the Gulf, culminating in that splashdown in the Gulf just off the coast of Pensacola. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, real quick. Um, Somebody had a good question here, yeah. Dragon SpaceX for entry brief. Okay. Okay, Doug, we have no update to timing because the burn went great and your vehicle is still looking really good for entry. No uh, health issues at this time. No health issues. Okay, Dragon copy, thank you. Uh, in addition, the uh, recovery team is go, and the weather is still great. Uh, winds are about two knots and waves about a, uh, one foot from the ship. They're Perfect. reporting very calm. How copy? Perfect. Copy good weather at the uh, landing area. Thank you. Okay, and uh, last piece is that we do expect some additional ready calm during entry prep two due to vehicle attitude. Um, so if you can get us your entry check uh, report uh, a little bit prior to entry prep two, we'd appreciate it. Copy. We'll go. Okay. Thanks, Doug. So there we just had a bit of a briefing between Mission Control and Bob and Doug up in Crew Endeavor, just confirming with them that the do orbit burn was great and that the timing on their pads doesn't need to be updated. Uh, we are able to upload new trajectory calculations, including times that remain live depending on uh, you know, how the burn goes. And at this point in time, those don't need to be updated. It is important that they do remain accurate because Bob and Doug, their primary mission right now is to continue to monitor uh, the vehicle status and telemetry and data being presented to them on their touch on their touchscreen displays in front of them, uh, and so during the more dynamic events, uh, they certainly want to be aware when things like parachute deploy will be happening and when splashdown is, is is expected. So making sure that the timeline of events, the sequencing is accurate, is certainly important for, in order for them to stay aware and updated of upcoming events. I'm really wondering if the noise we were able to hear from Doug from the capsule um, was already uh, re-entry noises or at least something. We're expecting that entry interface to come up in the next four minutes or so. Again, at that point, Dragon should be at an altitude of right around 62 statute miles or about 100 kilometers. And that's when it really starts to feel the effects of the atmosphere. It starts to experience the at uh, a lift and drag and other atmospheric effects it's been free from while flying in the near vacuum of low Earth orbit. So continuing to drop in altitude, mm -hmm. still looking for an on-time splashdown. Should just be about 19 minutes from now. 19 minutes to go. Fingers crossed. This is getting exciting. Oh, I'm sorry for not shouting out. Just a reminder, we do have that blackout period There's coming. No time. So as they continue to dip in the Earth's atmosphere and get lower and lower. The atmosphere gets thicker and thicker and it's going to generate more and more heat, eventually heating up the outside of Dragon to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And as it hits that peak heating, it'll also be forming a plasma around the spacecraft. So we do expect to lose calm for about six minutes. SpaceX Dragon crew entry preps are complete. Wow, do you hear that sound in the background? SpaceX copies entry prep complete, thank you. call from spacecraft commander Doug yeah, Hurley crossed. entry preps are complete so they are on board they are monitoring they are ready to come home yeah uh, and as of right now uh, entry prep should have also included uh, final configuration of their flight suit so we had a question uh, from our social media earlier if the right, visors I've got will a few be things here as well down, that I want to uh, those visors should be down at this point yeah, as the visors part are down. Okay, um, 
I, really quick, a few shout outs here because there was actually a pretty cool questions, a question among them. Uh, Landon Ross, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, Leandro Cura, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, ascending Whale, a difference between the Mission Control Center and SpaceX's HQ. Thank you for the super chat. Um, the, this is Hawthorne, California, and this is the SpaceX HQ and the control center. As you can see, this is a glass uh, room that is inside the rocket factory itself. If you look out of these windows there, you see that is the manufacturing place where they produce the Falcon boosters, the Merlin engines and everything else. So there's not that big of a difference there. Recovery vessel Go Navigator. But glad to hear that conditions are sustaining and that uh, winds also are looking really good <laughs> around two and two, two and a half miles per hour. So hardly anything at all. Really couldn't ask. Okay, uh, thank you, James Dowling, for the super chat. You're absolutely awesome, Alex. Thank you, thank you, thank you for shouting for the for the for the subs. Um, on, and Vetet Tux zero six. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you very, very, very much. It's a Driving joy to watch this with you guys. Up on 82 Absolutely. miles in altitude, continuing to dip down. We're expecting that entry interface to start pretty soon where the vehicle itself's really going to start heating up. It's going to continue to use its Draco thrusters to maintain its attitude as it continues through the Earth's atmosphere. And we'll have that calm yes. blackout coming up in just a couple of minutes as well. Now comes the hot phase. Oof. Fingers and toes crossed, everybody. So this is going to be epic. The has started again. This is when they're going to flush the cabin of Dragon with cooled air. They're also going to do a suit purge, uh, running cooled nitrox through the suits for Bob and Doug just to keep things at a comfortable temperature for them as the capsule goes through the re-entry and starts to heat up. Ah. 15 minutes to go. 15 minutes. We're absolutely close. Absolutely epic. What a show. Brilliant work by SpaceX there. Gotta, gotta say, that is flawless. Um, so like we said, we are anticipating a brief blackout period where we're unable to communicate with the capsule. That's, uh, we're expecting that to start in exactly three minutes. Uh, that will last for six minutes total. And during that time, we will be unable to command the vehicle or receive telemetry. That being said, Dragon is designed to be fully autonomous. So it's driving itself anyway. <laughs> so Bob and Doug uh, will, will stay fastened in their seats. Uh, and like I said, that anticipated loss of signal, or as you'll hear it called LOS, is anticipated to last for just six minutes. Okay, real quick here, we have a hashtag splashdown with Felix campaign period, going on. The capsule will, uh, will encounter what's known as entry interface. This is when the capsule is now uh, really in the Earth's atmosphere and beginning to be subject to aerodynamic forces. Uh, this is also when a lot of that friction will begin to build up and raise the external temperatures. Dragon SpaceX, we show two minutes until predicted calm blackout. We will see you on the other side at 1842. Dragon Cappies, 1842, we'll talk to you then. Talk to you then. So there's that heads up uh, communication <laughs> from Mission Control to Dragon Endeavor, confirming that comms blackout. Like I was saying, during the blackout, the Dragon capsule will be going through entry interface where it is encountering aerodynamic forces, really starting to build up uh, the external temperature as it, and that external temperature will reach about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the, the, the interior of the cabin is environmentally cooled. So Bob and Doug will, should, be, should remain comfortable during their descent. There will be cool air flowing not only through the cabin itself, but also through their suits. Yeah. The suits have sensors on them that are able to detect the temperature inside that suit. And once, it, once uh, that sensor 
reads that uh, it has reached the, the maximum temperature threshold, uh, it'll flush the suit with some cool air and, uh, and really circulate and, and cool it down. That's a wise thing to do. Okay, so we have a hashtag splashdown with Felix campaign right, going. Well, we are right um, around that estimated just give me a second time. Here. As we heard the call, we'll see them on the other side expected to regain that communication at about 42 minutes after the hour. So for these next six minutes, they're already less than 60 miles in altitude. And this is when the capsule is really heating up during that reentry, reaching temperatures of around 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. As again, you're essentially hitting the atmosphere more than 17,000 miles an hour and the friction building up that plasma around the spacecraft. And that's what's gonna prevent us from talking to Bob and Doug or getting data back from the spacecraft for the next six minutes. Its flight computers are in control though. It's going to continue to maintain its appropriate trajectory and attitude, uh, having attitude determination devices on board the capsule, not reliant on communications with satellites. And it's going to continue dragging down the correct path for this splashdown off the coast of Pensacola. So uh, we are in that blackout period. We're gonna continue to stand by until we get them on the other side. Okay, real quick, Splashdown with Felix, hashtag Splashdown with Felix. I want you to go and take a picture right now uh, while we are in the communication loss with the capsule. Take a picture, what you were doing at the time, and tweet it with the hashtag Splashdown with Felix, and I will retweet your pictures and we can laugh together. That would be absolutely awesome to do. If you can, can do that right now, that would be absolutely awesome. Thank you, guys. And, of course, we'll... All right, and just about two minutes after we get acquisition of signal AOS back with Dragon. We're gonna be looking for those parachutes and we should hopefully be getting some views from a couple of our assets out at the landing zone, including our WB-57 high altitude research plane, which is gonna be relying on Dragon's telemetry to actually lock onto it in the sky and give us an infrared view of the capsule during the final stages of re-entry. We're gonna be looking for the drogue deploys at about 44 minutes after the hour. Those will be two drogue shoots. They're gonna come out when the vehicle is still moving at about 350 miles an hour. And it'll be at an altitude of about 18,000 feet. They'll come out and do some initial slowing and stabilization of the spacecraft. And then uh, less than a minute later, they'll detach and the four main parachutes will deploy. You'll see them come out and look kind of closed up initially, and then they'll do what's known as reefing, opening up in really two different stages just to minimize the immediate loads on the parachutes themselves. Okay, real quick, for those who are used to metrics, that's at 5,300 meters for the drogue chutes at 560 kilometers per hour, and at 1,800 meters or 190 kilometers per hour, they will have the main chutes deployment. We should be 10 minutes away from splashdown. Yes. Oh my God. This is what we've been waiting for, guys. This is absolutely awesome. So right now we're getting our cameras on the WB-57 airplane, which is in the area, uh, getting those cameras ready to give us our first glimpse. should still have about three minutes left, a little less than three minutes until we anticipate reacquiring our signal and our connection with Bob and Doug and the Dragon spacecraft. Oh. If you're just tuning in, we are in a blackout period that we were expecting. Uh, this blackout period will last a total of six minutes and we're about halfway through there now. Uh, at the moment, Dragon is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and due to the plasma building up on the exterior of the vehicle, uh, we're unable to communicate or send commands, but Dragon is fully autonomous. It is steering itself. Uh, and right now, Bob and Doug are flying home. Yeah. At, <laughs> at 28,000 kilometers per hour, at 2,000 degrees Celsius on the heat shield. Just uh, just to give put that into perspective again. Yeah, they are flying home. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. Fingers crossed. Our Dragon SpaceX com check. Uh.
So we're still inside that anticipated blackout window. It does look like we are getting uh, maybe some sporadic data starting to peek through. That's why you heard that communications check with the spacecraft. Dragon SpaceX comm check. Never had you loud and clear. We're about 3.9 G. Yes! Copy, we've got you 5x5 five five as well, Doug. Looking good, and you can expect an automated shoot deployment. Did he say 3.8 G? All right, really good news there. We have come out of the blackout period, and we have reestablished connection with Dragon Endeavor with NASA Woo! astronauts Bob <laughs> Bucking and Doug Hurley on board. Now comes the beautiful part. Absolutely awesome. Ah, <laughs> Chet's racing, everybody. This is it. Absolutely awesome. We were able to awesome. reacquire that communication a little bit earlier than expected. And now we are just waiting. We should just be about two and a half minutes away from that initial drogue shoot deploy. Yeah, two minutes and 26 seconds. Two minutes. A GPS has converged. We're getting there. You may have heard earlier that Bob and Doug are currently experiencing 3.5 Gs. Not too bad. That's about what they pulled during the ascent phase. There you go. Just like a mild roller coaster. It's not that much. It's a pretty smooth ride. So the vehicle is now over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it is approaching the landing zone uh, off the coast of Florida near Pensacola. And there we have our there first shot. There we go. There it is, this, the first view from the WB-57 airplane. It is dipping in and out a little bit. This is gonna be an infrared camera showing us Dragon re-entering. Come on, trek it. We have that comm back with Bob and Doug. Uh, you heard AGPS is converging, uh, Dragon has uh, three GPS units that it uses uh, actually in the parachute deployment process uh, as it helps uh, along with the pressure sensors really give a solid altitude to the flight computers on when these are supposed to deploy. That was my son again. We're standing by for the drogue chute deployments. We should be just under five minutes away from splashdown. Passing 15 kilometers, brace for drogue window. I'm sorry. <laughs> Captain, you were brave. Just about 14 kilometers in altitude, 8.4 miles continuing to descend. Thank the family. There on your screen, we have a shot of the capsule as it is preparing to deploy those initial parachutes, the drogue parachutes. Again, these parachutes help slow the vehicle down even further and help stabilize in preparation for main chute deployment. There it is, the marshmallow. Right about now, the capsule is going about 400 miles per hour, decelerating quickly. Yep. At 350, the drogue chutes will and come standing out. Standing by for drogue deploys. Incredible. Visual two drogues There we out. go. Ah, drogues there are on out. On the screen, we have visual confirmation of those two drogue yes. deployments. Deputy drogue. All right, so two of two, the drogues now out. They're going to do their slowing and stabilizing of the Dragon spacecraft. They should be detaching in just a few moments, and then we'll see four parachutes, the main parachutes deployed. Dragon under drogues. Drogue descent rate nominal. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the expected descent rate, the expected velocity under the drogues nominal, we're right at around 150 miles an hour and already dropping. There we go. You can see the drogues now detached. And four chutes. Perfect. And there we have confirmation of deployment of the four yes. main parachutes. We are visual on four chutes out. We are visual. Four main parachutes deployed. Four main. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is it. Nothing can go wrong now. 
Absolutely awesome. They made it. Woo! <laughs> so at this point, the main parachutes have deployed. They are inflating, as you can see there on your screen, continuing to slow Dragon down significantly. Beautiful. We are anticipating splashdown in just under two minutes and 30 seconds. We've already slowed the vehicle down to about 16 miles an hour. It's already less than a kilometer in altitude. Yep. They're home, everybody. Absolutely amazing. Ah, oh, beautiful. Main shoot descent rate nominal, passing through 700 meters. Love it. I love it. That's exactly what we wanted to see tonight. So at this point, Dragon has saved all propulsion systems on 600 board. 600 meters. 600 meters. And we're 600 meters above the Gulf Look of Mexico. Look how charred it. Look at how charred the capsule is. Should be approximately a minute 30 from splashdown. Mission control team here in Hawthorne has reported the precise landing coordinates to the recovery team. They are standing by ready to go get our space dads. Come on. We just passed about 300 oh, meters. Beautiful pictures. One minute till splashdown. That is SpaceX broadcast. Look at that. 200 meters. We are braced for splashdown. Copy, brace for splashdown. So there we heard Bob and Doug reporting that they are bracing for a splashdown. We should be able to see uh, the Gulf of Mexico here in the shot just momentarily, as we're now just about 20 meters off the ocean. Look at my countdown clock. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Splash down. <laughs> As you can see on your screen, Woo! we have visual confirmation for splashdown. SpaceX copies and concurs. We see splashdown and mains cut. Dragon Endeavor has returned oh. home. NASA astronauts and Bob and Doug. On behalf of the SpaceX and NASA teams, welcome back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. Thanks for flying <laughs> SpaceX. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. It's our honor and privilege to fly the flight of the uh, Crew Dragon and Endeavor. Congrats, everybody at SpaceX. Woo! They made it. Uh, all good. And we're uh, into section of four decimal eight zero zero. Bam. Thanks for those words, Doug, and we uh, copy that you are into uh, 4.800. It's a great news all around there. Our space dads are back on Earth after a 19-hour return journey from space. Dragon Endeavor has splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico just off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. And on your screen there, you can see our two fast boats, and two they boats, are yep. indeed fast, <laughs> racing out to greet Dragon Endeavor as uh, it sits there. The first on there, we can see a view inside the capsule. Bob and Doug looking good. Although the communication was a little choppy, we did Space hear. Uh, Endeavor in three decimal one, we show ourselves in stable one. And SpaceX copies for uh, vehicle assessment, step three decimal one, stable one. Good news. Yeah, give stable us a one, essentially. View. They're upright in the water, stable two. Uh, also, another potential where it could be on its side or even upside down, but Dragon does have a water ballast system uh, to keep it upright where it's able to essentially pump seawater uh, into bladders in the service section of the capsule. But they're upright. We already see the fast boats approaching. They touched down, uh, came right on time at 11.48 a.m. Pacific, uh, 1848 uh, UTC. Bob and Doug now in the water and the recovery ops, they've already begun. We're, we already see the, the fast boat starting to move in. Uh, we're still maintaining that good communication back uh, with Bob and Doug and the team here in Hawthorne. Uh, pretty soon we should be getting uh, the go for them to move in. 
begin their hypergall sniffs and uh, begin wrangling up those parachutes. But we can see Bob and Doug Beautiful. inside the capsule back on planet Earth. Yeah, those fast boats will be moving in to do a couple of things. Uh, they'll be performing what's known as a sniffer test. That's essentially to ensure that the air around the vehicle uh, doesn't have yes. any toxic fumes from the hypergolic propellants on board. So once we get the all clear from there, uh, the water recovery lead will give the uh, will give the go for approach, and that's when the the first fast boat will actually approach the capsule. Hopefully, give a little wave to Bob and Doug through the window, <laughs> and uh, one of the crew members will uh, one of the team members will actually climb on top of Crew Dragon and begin to. Um, begin to place the rigging equipment necessary to hoist Dragon out of the oh, water. Look at that. Oh, still getting a view from the WB, uh, the airplane flying overhead. It gave us those, those great views are really our first views of Bob and Doug re-entering the Earth's atmosphere uh, from up above. You can see the four parachutes in the water. Uh, we heard those were cut automatically uh, as expected by Dragon. Uh, so for now, the crew just standing by. Again, they're going to stay in their suits, in their seats. Uh, we're waiting for all these initial checks. Dragon SpaceX comm check. Loud and clear, hello. Loud and clear as well. Just wanted to verify a quick comm reconfiguration. Thank you. Just wow. Wow, that so essentially what just happened there is they reconfigured. And Solo, if you can just relay the uh, status of the uh, fast boats and the recovery uh, as you get them, we would appreciate it. You bet. Absolutely, Doug. Uh, we'll go. So what just happened there, you heard uh, comms reconfiguration. That's essentially looping Bob and Doug's communication into the launch, or excuse me, into the recovery team uh, so that if not, they can hear feedback from Bob and Doug directly as well. Now, I, we talked a little bit about... SpaceX uh, Endeavor, you can let Ben and James know. Uh, we're doing pretty good so far. Okay, yeah. we'll let the flight docs know that you're feeling good so far. Thanks for that update. Really good news there to hear that they're feeling good uh, and they can let the flight surgeons know that all is well inside Dragon Endeavor. I actually love that they're using right, the Apollo time splashdowns. It sounds like we do have uh, one of our folks that's on location there with the recovery forces, NASA's Brandy Dean. She's been, she's uh, joining us by satellite phone. Brandy, if you can hear me, I mean, what is it like right there in the water? What was it like to watch Dragon Rear uh, watch them splash down? For the, uh, Test objective. Uh, so stand by at the console once we get it up and operating and looking. Yeah, satellite phone. Okay, SpaceX copies. We'll be ready for that in just a couple minutes. We should have the uh, go for you in just a moment. Please stand by. <laughs> Fantastic. Absolutely stoked still. I, I don't know what to say. This is absolutely epic. SpaceX, hands down. Who was that? Sounded excited. Everybody's going to be excited right now. This is absolutely fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for watching this together with me. This is a memory that I'll keep for the rest of my life. This is absolutely amazing thing to do. SpaceX shows everybody that they are actually absolutely flawless with what they are doing. It's it's just that the, the crew dragon dragon couldn't have performed better than this. Perfect. Five stars. Hundred out out of a hundred. They're in the this center is... of your screen. Dragon capsule awaiting for the fast boats to approach and begin the rigging process. And there on the left hand side of your screen we can see that second fast boat come into view. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personal personnel aside alongside in just under a minute. Absolutely awesome. First boat approaching. Dragon copy, thank you. All right, so they're starting to move in. As Kate just said, that first boat's gonna go in, sniff around the capsule for any traces of hypergalls. The second one's gonna start rounding up the parachutes, uh, which we're getting some really cool views from the WV-57 still flying overhead, uh, looking down, you can see the parachutes in the water and the second boat start to gather them up. 
Uh, we'll try one more time real quick. Uh, we have NASA's Brandy Dean out with the recovery forces. Brandy, if you can hear me, what was it like to watch this dragon come down under parachutes? Oh, it was amazing. I wish everybody could have had my view. It was such a beautiful sight. It was a gorgeous day. The water is calm. Really the best weather we could have asked for. Um, and we did. We heard the um, the sonic booms as it made its way back. We were able to find it early on as the parachutes were deploying. So it was very exciting for everybody who was gathered here. That's incredible. We actually had some questions from people if you'd be able to hear the sonic boom and we weren't sure. So I'm really glad you just answered that for us. Um, I mean, we talked so much about the weather. You said it looks great. What, I mean, what was it like on the ride out there? Has it just been kind of clear skies and clear seas the whole way? I'm not sure if you can hear me right now, um, but I think you're asking about the weather, whether it was clear skies. There are just a kind of a circle of clouds along the horizon, very low, but um, the, the, we were able to see the parachutes far above and follow it all the way until it's down. Sounds spooky. All right, well, we're not getting any views on the boat, so what kind of activity is taking place right now? We're able to see the fast boats approaching the capsule. Uh, what's everybody doing on the boat to just kind of get everything ready? Uh, the boat's also making its way for the capsule. I can't see it with my rear with my eyes yet, but we're getting closer. Everybody's been kind of standing by, um, holding ready positions for quite a while now. So as soon as it, as soon as it flashed, the obvious people that just stand in um, and start work on their own, wow. their own activities. That sounds pretty scoop. Spooky All right, copy to me. that. Well, we're gonna keep watching from here. Um, <laughs> thanks for calling in, and thanks for being out there with everybody and getting us these great views. It's really incredible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brandy. We hope to get you back in port soon, uh, and we'll talk to you back in Houston. Oh, I'm so stoked. Damn. Yeah, that woman sounded there really on spooky. Screen, uh, ooh, camera view change. That is a view coming to us from Go Navigator, <laughs> the recovery vessel. Uh, the two fast boats are out there getting to getting ready to uh, basically uh, plot, or excuse me, install the rigging equipment required to hoist Dragon out of the water. Uh, one, the other fast boat is actually collecting the parachutes from the water. We definitely wanna uh, bring those back on board with us. Uh, but shortly here, we should actually see one of the team members uh, crawl up onto the side of the capsule in order to install, that, uh, install the rigging, like I, I mentioned. That particular team member is highly experienced and highly trained. As you can imagine, yeah. climbing on top of an oddly shaped thing in you know, the ocean <laughs> could be a little tricky. So uh, this person has undergone a lot, hours and hours of training and certification in order He's to perform this very important task. There on the right hand side of your screen, we see the second fast boat approaching. Uh, of course, both of these boats uh, needed to wait for their queue uh, from the water recovery lead in order to approach Dragon after splashdown. Uh, again, that was just to make sure that there weren't any toxic vapors in the air. Uh, and now that they got the all clear, we do see them beginning to work uh, on and around the Dragon capsule. So even though the camera's a little shaky, uh, that water looks super, super duper uh, smooth, almost like glass, which is certainly ideal for a water recovery like today. All right, free yeah, tip gotta for remember next time. that this is a view from the the main recovery vessel, which was still a few miles away from the splashdown Dragon point. SpaceX, we have hypercall sweeps and unfired ordnance checks. Uh, nominal rigor is on board the vehicle. About two five minutes until capsule lift. Our free tip for next time: use a gimbal stabilizer. Well, we'll get outside and uh, good news. Awesome. All right confirmation there that all of those hypergolic uh, awesome. vapor tests came out uh, positive or rather negative which is a positive thing <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the team was able to approach and now the crew member that is installing the rigging is on top of the capsule it's difficult to see there uh, because the slower vessel that re the primary recovery ship is a little further away but as we heard it's just a mere two and a half minutes until uh, they will be hoisted out of the water 
awesome. Must be extremely difficult. I'm, I'm sorry, T 25 minutes, not 2.5. I misheard that. Yeah. To crawl they're on top fast, of the capsule. But they're not that yeah. fast. <laughs> uh, we also have been hearing that uh, the secondary boat, which its primary mission in this case is securing those parachutes, uh, they've already got buoys attached to both droves and uh, two of the four mains and already had eyes on the other two, so they're moving through that work pretty quickly. Again, their primary responsibility, getting those parachutes together. Uh, the drogues uh, detaching from the spacecraft uh, right before the deployment of the mains, the mains automatically detaching immediately as Dragon detected splashdown. Uh, all of that happening right per the timeline. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the hardwired buttons that Bob and Doug have on their seats and in their control uh, displays, and cutting the, the main chutes is one of those buttons. In the event that they weren't automatically cut after splashdown, Bob and Doug would have had uh, the ability to do so. Uh, if the winds were stronger and they caught the parachutes, it could certainly create a condition where the capsule could be moved unintentionally by those dragging parachutes. So definitely want to avoid that. So uh, that's one of the, the few buttons that are hardwired into the cabin for the crew. Yeah, gimbals do do really good job even on those distances. Um, but it doesn't matter. It is it's just epic what we can see there. And it must be incredibly difficult to climb on top of a wet. And, again, and right now we're expecting about 20 minutes uh, for the the main recovery vessel, the GOAT Navigator, to reach Dragon. By that point, all the rigging will be affixed, and then they'll be able to use the A-frame hydraulic lift on the back of the on the back of the vessel to begin to pull Dragon up out of the water. Uh, Bob and Doug did report they're seeing the guys climbing around outside their window on the capsule, mm -hmm. getting that rigging affixed. Uh, still doing good uh, from all of their reports. And we're just going to see the vessel continue to close in. It's a little over 1.3 nautical miles still away, but you can see things starting to sharpen up in our view as it does draw in closer. One thing I didn't get to mention as the sequence events was happening, everything was going so quickly, uh, just before the drogue de deployment, the seats automatically rotated to about 26 degrees. Uh, and so if you think back to when we saw Bob and Doug while they were still on orbit and during the, uh, the deorbit burn and all their departure burns, they were actually laying closer to on their backs at the 40 degree position, uh, where essentially they were looking up at the top of Dragon Capsule, like their stomachs were facing uh, the top nose cone there. At this point, the seats would have rotated, so they're in a little bit more of an upright position. Uh, that's done to ensure that um, the loads experienced from landing are, you know, don't, doesn't, doesn't hurt them. So uh, at this point, they are not really laying on their backs in the ocean. They are seated upright a little bit, which would allow them to have a better view of the team working to install the rigging equipment. Thank you. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Dave, Donna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I totally agree with you, Philip. The moderator team is just awesome, like as, as every time. Love you guys. Thank you for the work. So at this point, we're at about 22 minutes until Dragon will be lifted onto the recovery vessel. Ah, uh, now what? What did he say? Uh, what did she say? Uh, 15 minutes until they, uh, or 20 minutes until they lifted onto no uh, go navigator. Bob and Doug are still strapped into their seats, kind of like an airplane. You know, they say, "Do not unbuckle your seatbelt." until the captain determines that it's safe to do so. Uh, they will stay, remain in their seats throughout the entire recovery process, essentially until it's time to get them out. Ah, can't wait. What are those boats for? Like I said, we are expecting to lift Dragon onto the Go Navigator recovery ship in about 21 minutes. Oh, those are. And then in 28 minutes, we will be opening that hatch and beginning crew egress, also known as exit. Yep. And we Absolutely did hear amazing. the rigging is pretty much complete, so 
uh, right as they arrive there at the capsule, the main recovery vessel will be able to begin uh, getting it up out of the water. I think that uh, uh, demo two is even much darker than demo one was after re-entry. So now as the recovery vessel Go Navigator is getting closer to Dragon, Dragon's position there off the coast of Pensacola, Florida, we're able to see the capsule in a little bit more detail. Uh, it is certainly no longer a bright shade of white. <laughs> like we said, those external temperatures uh, we're reaching up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So the thermal protective systems, thermal protection systems, uh, enable Dragon to return while keeping the yeah. internal temperature rather temperate. And everybody, while you're still watching, you are seeing like a few more boats than important. expected. Um, the team's currently working uh, with a few private vessels. Uh, in the area, making sure that they get out of there. Thank you, Graham. Much appreciated. Look at that thing is black. Remember the picture of demo one I showed you from after the re-entry? It was looked like a toasted marshmallow, but this thing is like charcoal. Crazy. And there's still somebody clinging onto it. Leandro, thank you very, very much for the super chat. Yeah, the mods are absolutely epic. Totally and now agree. we see one of the SpaceX fast boats moving in. he stay on the capsule? So we are being advised that uh, the recovery team is radioing out to the vessels in the water near Crew Dragon to vacate the area uh, so that we're able to extract Bob and Doug safely. Uh, you know, also for the safety of those folks in the area as well, not just Bob and Doug. Yeah, this is, this is obviously a dynamic operation. One of the first things we do is make sure there aren't essentially poisonous fumes around the capsule. So uh, something like this just really can endanger the whole thing, endanger the crew members and endanger themselves. So uh, the SpaceX team is moving in to try and get them away so they can safely recover the Dragon capsule and get Bob and Doug on deck and safely inside their medical quarters. So. We can see them, they're getting a lot closer. Uh, we expect uh, about 10 minutes or so until they should be in position. Uh, all the rigging has been affixed on the Dragon capsule. And once they arrive, they'll be able to use that hydraulic lift to get Dragon up and out of the water. Thank you, Laker. Much appreciated. This is absolutely epic. So the recovery if you vessel this. Go Navigator is getting closer and closer to Dragon Endeavor as it awaits its recovery, or as it awaits to be hoisted out of the Gulf of Mexico. Again, we landed just off the coast of Florida near Pensacola. I think. Maybe next time we shouldn't announce our landing zone. <laughs> Oh, there we got a shot from our WB-57 plane. It looks like that area has cleared out significantly, so that is good to see. It's just soot, though. It washes off from, from the seawater. And we're also hearing that all of the parachutes have buoys on them, so also good news uh, as the recovery process continues for SpaceX Demo 2. TJ is here. Somebody says TJ Cooney. Hey, TJ. Hey, TJ. Good evening, TJ. Dragon Thank you for joining us. Config. We're having loads of fun here. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Doug. We're about to uh, reconfigure the forward link. Absolutely we awesome. uh, may lose that for about one or so minutes, uh, and that should happen shortly. Yeah. Absolutely awesome day. Totally Happy. agreed. Let's that, give us a call back when you think we got it back. Will do. There comes Go Navigator. Is
Is that the boat or on the left side there? So as the main vessel gets closer, it's gonna back up and get its hydraulic lift set up right next to the Dragon capsule, still in the water. Uh, Bob and Doug still inside, uh, just waiting for that recovery. Uh, we should start the hoisting operations in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And then it'll be a pretty quick uh, lift up out of the water using that hydraulic lift into the Dragon nest on the deck of the boat, or the ship rather. Uh, and then they'll move it underneath the helipad into essentially the crew recovery area where they'll have a platform right up to the hatch. They'll be able to open up the hatch. Uh, SpaceX uh, medical doctor will be the first one through the door, able to do a quick check in with Bob and Doug on their status. And then he and the other uh, medical doctors, flight surgeons and uh, trained technicians will begin to help them out of the capsule. Everybody, this is yeah, TJ Cooney, just after by the way, in the down, chat. We did hear uh, Give me a Bob second. Did report I... that they were feeling good after re-entry, mm -hmm. so uh, that was relayed to the flight surgeon. And really want to give you a shout out here. That is TJ Cooney from I Need More Space. If you don't know the channel yet, go check him out after the stream. It's really, really worth it. Does awesome content. You can see Dragon awaiting to be pulled out of the water. Again, we are anticipating that lift uh, to begin in just under 15 minutes. We're approaching 14 minutes here. Uh, and then in 21 minutes, we will have an open hatch. There it comes. <laughs> and you can see the main recovery vessel in the top right there. That's the Completely helipad with uh, the big SpaceX X on top. It's now backing up towards the capsule. Certainly not to be confused with one of our uh, landing drone ships. <laughs> and then after they are out, out of the capsule. There's a live view of Dragon, uh, of Dragon floating in the water there in the background, Beautiful. along with many onlookers, <laughs> certainly from a safer distance at this point. Uh, this is a live shot coming from Go Navigator, our rec primary recovery vessel here. So it's direct. Crew Dragon is also accompanied by the fast boats that are helping to bring it in closer. Um, and there you can see a couple Beautiful. of the recovery team members on the deck. Uh, and also just behind them, we get our first good view of the nest. Uh, yes, so this is uh, essentially the nest in the background there. Dragon will be hoisted using the hydraulic lift out of the water and into that nest. That nest will then be pulled towards the camera from this view, towards those individuals on that upper deck there. Uh, and that's where the... Dragon SpaceX com check. I stood next to that ship. Five meters Loud away. Loud and clear, Solo, how us? Loud and clear as well. And from the video, it looks like the boat is about one uh, length away, about five to ten meters backing up to you. Absolutely Happy awesome. that. Uh, thanks for the update. All right, so good news there. We're getting ready to see Dragon to be lifted out of the water and into the recovery nest. As I was saying, that nest will be pulled towards the camera, uh, towards that upper deck that we saw there, and that's where the medical stretchers will be waiting uh, to assist them into the medical bays for uh, evaluation after capsule egress. Absolutely it's awesome. Already been, it's already been 25 minutes since they splashed down. It doesn't feel like it. That uh, was definitely the fastest 25 yeah. minutes of the day. <laughs> the, the timeline we were anticipating was for the lifting operations to start within about 30 minutes. So we're pretty much right on the timeline still. That's been a, a pretty common thing so far today. Uh, you can see them uh, with one of the fast boats getting it positioned to start uh, moving out with the additional rigging uh, to affix to the Dragon capsule where they're going to use this A-frame to pull it up out of the water. And you can see the dragon nest at the very bottom. It's uh, that circular object uh, with the A1 right on it. The dragon nest, awesome name. So while this is the first time we are recovering a capsule with crew members on board, the recovery team has been... And Dragon, just letting you know, we got a couple lines connected and uh, rigging is in progress. Copy that, SpaceX, thank you. All right there, so just updating the crew that they might feel some uh, momentum as the lines, as a couple of the rigging lines are attached. Uh, there we can actually, there's our first good shot of the individual who is uh, placing that rigging equipment. equipment. Yeah, Again, go. that's someone that's highly specialized and very well trained for these operations. 
Uh, as I was saying, the recovery team has rehearsed and practiced this with Bob and Doug themselves, actually, uh, in a test capsule, practicing the, the egress as well as um, they have recovered, or excuse me, they have practiced the recovery process many times. Uh, and actually, through those practice runs, uh, they have effectively cut the recovery period in half from the initial Demo-1 mission. So uh, wow. it's really nice to see that uh, the, the process itself, after being rehearsed and carefully choreographed, uh, is, is going super efficiently. Again, uh, safety is the number one priority. So making sure that only uh, personnel involved in active recovery operations are present on the deck. Uh, you may have heard us mention yeah. before that there are about 40 people on board today, but we certainly don't want uh, anyone in danger or, or to fall overboard. And there he falls. That guy intentionally Giant jumped. <laughs> Speaking of falling overboard. <laughs> We're ready. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so the crew was just told in about 30, in the next 30 seconds, they have the lines affixed, so they're going to start lifting the capsule up out of the water. And at this point, the communication we're getting with Dragon is actually oh, being routed fast. through the boat itself at this point. So there we can see the lift. Dragon is out of the water. Yeah, so and then now, now that A-frame is going to start swinging it back. And it's bound right for that nest at the bottom of your screen. This is it, the last few meters. So there we're getting a better shot of all the points in which Dragon is tethered to the hydraulic lift, ensuring that it isn't swinging freely. Wow. That's a historic capsule. Epic. And now we can see Dragon Endeavor being carefully set down into the recovery nest on top of Go Navigator. Here we go. Dragon uh, SpaceX, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks and preparing to translate you to the egress platform. Fantastic. <laughs> this is absolutely fantastic. Be happy. Thank you. Yeah, I bet you so for are. the first time in two months, NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley are on some sort of ground. I guess we can't call it solid ground because it is a ship. However, uh, it is the first time that they are not in space, uh, on a rocket, or bobbing in the ocean. Now it looks about the same as Demo Mission 1, though. Yeah, so now that they're in the nest, we're, they're going to start translating it forward. Yeah. And Dragon's going to move into essentially the hangar section underneath that helipad and then up to that recovery platform that we saw a little bit earlier. At that point, uh, the spacecraft technicians will work to open up the hatch. As we said previously, it's a manual process uh, with a couple of different uh, attachments you have to engage before the hatch itself can be open. They'll get it opened. And then uh, SpaceX's Anil Menon will be the first one through the hatchway to check in on Bob and Doug, get their initial health assessment, see if they're ready to move, and then we'll start assisting them out of the capsule and into that medical facility on the boat. Absolutely awesome. It's absolutely epic, by the way, that everybody is still here watching this with me. Team Space, absolutely epic, epic event. So at this point, the recovery team is doing uh, final securing of the capsule in preparation to actually move the recovery nest uh, into closer to the interior of the ship. It'll actually be uh, in a little bit of a covered deck there. We had a, we saw that camera view earlier, uh, looking straight out from the center of the boat. So once Dragon is secured in the nest, uh, the nest will be translated then forward and uh, closer to the recovery, uh, the, the, excuse me, closer to the position in which we're able to actually open the hatch. So while Dragon is on board safely, uh, we're not able yeah. to agreed. do that just yet. Yeah, yeah Joe, agreed. Working to detach some of those lines that were used to hoist it using the A-frame, and uh, we heard that they should be done with that in just a moment, and then we'll start that translation. 
<laughs> this is absolutely awesome. Again, uh, some some people said that we should now transition over the, to the starship. I would be really surprised if there was a starship hop tonight because Elon is in Hawthorne, and I bet he wants to be in uh, Boca Chica when when the when the starship right now, hop happens. Right we can happens. see the recovery team uh, releasing those securing lines that were used during the lift of the capsule from the water uh, into the nest. So they are releasing those securing lines from the sides, making sure it is secure from the bottom. Aren't they going to be picked up by a helicopter now or are they, they are not driving into the, into the harbor with the ship? And there we see Dragon moving forward. Look at that. Smooth as a Tesla, I would say. Mm. <laughs> Very good. It's really interesting to see those scorching marks uh, now that we get a really nice up close detail shot of Dragon. Oh, okay. Standing by for the go for side hatch open. That rounded square there in the center of the capsule is that side hatch. And on either side are those oval windows. Come on. Dragon SpaceX, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. Happy, we're ready. All right, crew got the call. We are go for hatch open. Here we go, let some fresh air in. That must be so epic to stand next to the capsule there. Just came from the ISS. In a flawless mission. And if you look closely immediately above the hatch, you can see the area where you can see them working in now. That's where those drogue chutes deployed from. The two circles on either side were where the mortars were. Uh, the main parachutes uh, now hidden by the platform underneath the, the side hatch. No, they don't leave the parachutes. They had boats to pick them up. <laughs> the crew is yeah. in the process of removing the side hatch. The reason why it takes so long for the hatch to... We can see that Go Navigator is in transit. It is making its way back to the Pensacola Naval Air Station. Okay, so the reason However, why they... However, Bob and Doug will get a ride <laughs> from the recovery vessel via helicopter. Uh, See, helicopter. Uh, so it takes so long to open the hatch because it is made that way. So it doesn't happen on accident. That's the reason why it takes so long. You have to go to, through several steps to actually open the hatch. So it can't be done on accident, you know, because that would be a really bad thing to open the hatch on accident. And uh, um, so that's that. And th th they are going to be picked up with a helicopter um, because the ship has a helicopter land pa landing Again, pad. We're preparing and I was to open the wondering side when hatch. the helicopter comes. And once that, done, once that is done, the flight surgeon <clears throat> will pop his head in, do an initial check, see how Bob and Doug are doing. And Dragon SpaceX, we've got a slight delay due to some uh, potential NTO hits near the side hatch. Captain Mike, we're uh, standing by. And so they're still continuing to do kind of those sniffs, so checking for any vapors or anything. So those NDO, it's uh, NO2 nitrogen dioxide, uh, primarily can uh, get detected in the air from the burning of fuel. So they're going to continue to just inspect around the capsule, make sure that it's Again, safe for the crew, safe for the recovery experts uh, before they get this hatch open. But again, moving right along the timeline, it's uh, since they splashed down at 1148 uh, a.m. Pacific. And so again, they're just pausing the operations for a moment, doing some additional air sampling uh, around the prop system. We still have uh, telemetry being fed from the vehicle. So flight controllers here 
in Hawthorne able to monitor prop tanks, propulsion tank pressures, and not seeing any issues with those at the moment. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. It's the first, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> That is the first not nominal thing tonight. So again, just a short <laughs> pause in the operations is again, they're just sniffing around the capsule, making sure we don't have uh, any readings that might indicate a fuel leak or anything around the vehicle. Uh, they did detect some NDO, some nitrogen dioxide, which is typically a residue that uh, arises from the burning of fuel. So they're continuing to do just a couple of different air readings, uh, grab samples essentially, uh, before they proceed with the hatch opening. Pavan, <coughs> Pavan and Forestville Opa, thank you very much for the super chats. Um, I just saw a question here. Can the hatch be opened from the inside faster if something like fire or something happens after landing? <clears throat> so the hatch SpaceX can be opened update. from We're the inside. We're still investigating. It uh, looks like we'll be setting up a service section purge. We're working on an ETA for you. But I couldn't tell you if it would be faster from the inside. I could. I really couldn't. I guess so. <clears throat> yeah, explosive bolts would be the quick way. In case if you're just joining us, NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley have safely returned from the International Space Station. They made an on-time splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico just off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, epic. At 11.48 uh, a.m. Pacific. Still can't believe it. 18.48 a.m. Universal time. And yes. they have been pulled out of the water and hoisted onto the recovery vessel Go Navigator. And right now the team is uh, just completing, uh, they did a, a, an initial check and found that there might be some remnant, remnant vapors, uh, which we certainly don't want to be around when uh, we have Bob and Doug coming out of the capsule. So the team is uh, working to purge the service section in preparation uh, for crew egress. There you go, have some protective little commentary belts. on uh, the hatches that, that we're, we've been talking about. So while Dragon's top hatch is used to connect to the International Space Station, uh, that's the one that's located under the nose cone, which is currently hidden there uh, at the top of the capsule. Um, uh, before, the this is the, the side hatch is what is utilize, utilized for uh, ingress and egress, both on the launch pad as well as coming up here on the recovery vessel. When the international, or excuse me, when the capsule is docked to the International Space Station, uh, they will use the forward hatch <laughs> yeah. to exit and enter the capsule. Something to note <laughs> that once that side hatch is opened, uh, it'll be the first time that Bob and Doug have gotten a breath of fresh air. Uh, the first time that they've been able to do so in two months uh, since they boarded the Falcon 9 uh, at the start of their mission back on May 30th. Uh, it takes a little longer, though. Yeah, with an on-time splashdown, they return with almost exactly 64 days in space on this mission, just a few minutes shy of that. Um, so I know they're looking forward to it minimum in a little bit more of a stable condition now that they're on the boat not in the water uh, but again our team's just continuing to step through they're they're reporting that they're seeing uh, all of the vapor levels that they initially detected have been dropping um, and that service and section purge drag in uh, spacex uh, we show that levels are declining but are uh, continuing with purge Copy. So they are saying that there are fumes. Uh, and in addition, just so you know, we are not seeing any, you know, leak indications or anything like that. These are pretty small levels, but we still need to do the purge at this time. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Kathy, yeah, you're reading my mic. We were just wondering if you saw any indications of a leak or some depressurization somewhere, but it sounds like it's just uh, part of the deal. Yeah, that's a good read back, Doug. All right. Everything seems to be fine for the astronauts. <clears throat> that's the most important thing. So we'll have to wait a little longer for the hatch to open. All right, so we're just continuing to get a view down uh, right at the hatch of the capsule. They are detecting those very small traces uh, of a couple of the hypergalls. Um, the one we've heard specifically mentioned was uh, NDO or NO. Uh, three nitrogen or NO2 nitrogen dioxide. Um, they are at very low levels, um, obviously not at a very harmful level as we still have people in close proximity to the capsule. Uh, they are going through with the purge. They're not seeing any indications of a leak uh, in the service section of Dragon. That's where uh, pretty much all of those different fuel tanks uh, with the hypergalls are located uh, inside the capsule. Thank you very much, Dennis. Much appreciated. And if, again, if I've forgotten to shout out to anyone, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's most of the time really hard to, to not skip anyone. I, I appreciate all the super chats I got today. They fund the show. And uh, if you don't want to give a super chat, um, consider becoming a patron. Consider becoming a YouTube member. Consider buying a shirt. All that helps the and show. We are just about 44 minutes post splashdown. Uh, actually still ahead of the timeline as we weren't expecting to get the hatch open until shortly before 60 minutes uh, at which point we'd be bringing Bob and Doug out so uh, this and service and section SpaceX another update the service section purge should begin in a bit under five minutes uh, right now we're showing NTO about 2x of our personnel exposure limits and uh, we're hoping once we start the purge it'll drop down for us okay thanks Mike hmm well, a few more minutes won't harm them. So they have to stay in I'm the capsule. I'm going to have to correct myself. So it's NTO, that's the dinitrogen te tetraoxide, and that's one of the hypergolic fuels used hypergolic, inside yep. Dragon for powering those uh, Draco thrusters. How does that get there, though? Can't be the Super Draco Dracos because they weren't touched. So it's got to be the Dracos. So again, the SpaceX engineers detecting uh, levels of NTO. It's dinitrogen tetraoxide. It's one of the hypergolic fuels used inside the Dragon spacecraft. Um, Very poisonous. Levels higher than they would like. Um, so they're essentially doing a purge to help uh, dissipate any vapors in and around the service section where those fuel tanks reside in the Dragon capsule. We're expecting that to take within the next five minutes or so. Uh, we were still expecting the crew out inside of an hour, so still on the timeline or a few minutes ahead, and we should be seeing Bob and Doug. Uh, once we see those uh, levels continue to drop around the capsule, we'll begin to step through the hatch opening process once again. All right, give them some time. Yeah, hypergolic fuels are really, really toxic, uh, carcinogenic, acidic. You don't want to have that around you. Quick, quick, quick go away. Hmm. Let the purging commence. Boat standing still right now. Or barely moving. I think it's standing still. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Breathing protection. 
Hmm. So right now we're getting ready to purge the surface section. Uh, this is to make sure that uh, the lingering NTO fumes that the team is detecting uh, get flushed out essentially. Uh, the service section is not the interior cabin where Bob and Doug are. Uh, it's actually the part of the capsule that is outside of the place where Bob and Doug are. It's, it's external to the, to the cabin, but it's inside the capsule itself. So you can think of it as the space between the exterior of the Dragon capsule and the interior space uh, where Bob and Doug are. There's, the, I think, the interior pressure vessel, essentially. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Bob and Doug are fine. The air that they are breathing um, <laughs> is, you know, that nitrox uh, mix that they've been getting throughout the entire duration of of, of today's uh, operations. But it'll be essentially the area below their cabin, um, completely sealed off from the service section. Yeah, that service section is where uh, we, there's a lot of telemetry. It's where um, there are the prop tanks and we're just making sure that those get aerated so that uh, lingering fumes are swept away. Yeah, again, they had detected higher levels then they want to see of nitrogen tetraoxide. Uh, that's one of the two hypergolic fuels used uh, in Dragon, the other one being monomethyl hydrazine. Uh, those two fuels, uh, essentially when thrown together, even without an ignition source, uh, will react. Uh, that's what makes them hypergolic fuels. A uh, much simpler, more elegant uh, solution used in a lot of um, on-orbit maneuvering systems uh, in spacecraft. Very toxic, though. Very, very toxic. So again, we're just standing by. Did an episode about that. I think I did an episode so about As you can everything. see on your screen, there is one crew member that has kind of what looks like a... Dragon SpaceX, uh, don't have a great, a huge update for you. Just letting you know the service section uh, purge is still in work. Um, Hmm. And we'll try to get you out of there. No. And we'll try to get you out of there shortly. What was that? Still live. Traffic. Boats moving again. So as I was saying, two individuals on your screen there, one uh, with a face mask and what looks like a scuba tank there uh, with some clean breathing air. Um, there huh. might be another crew member with the same personal protective equipment or PPE that will come on deck here. Uh, that type of equipment, ah, there we go. Uh, that's the kind of equipment that is required in order to perform this purge. Again, uh, the NTO is, the fumes from that are toxic. And of course we wanna keep all crew members safe as we prepare the side hatch for opening in order to let Dragon Bob and SpaceX. Doug egress. Uh, looks like limits uh, are dropping and getting pretty good. Uh, we're still continuing with the purge just to be extra sure. Good to know. Okay, it sounds good, Mike, thank you. Yeah, nice. Well, there we go. All right, so we just heard the call, the limits continuing to drop uh, on that. Who would have thought? Uh, that NTO, that nitrogen uh, tetraoxide. So they're just gonna continue to monitor those. They're doing a purge, essentially flushing the air around the service section where the tanks uh, for those hypergolic fuels are in Dragon. Uh, as Kate was talking about, they're not inside the pressure vessel, the section of the Dragon interior where Bob and Doug and their atmosphere exists. Uh, they're essentially outside the pressure vessel, but still inside the outer shell of the Dragon spacecraft. Yeah. So nothing in the cabin, but the, the people outside are equally as important as the astronauts on the inside. So <clears throat> masks might be a good idea. We have these gas detectors, mobile hand gas detectors. It's 
super interesting to see them work there. We are just about 52 minutes post splashdown. Again, we're just waiting for them to get good readings on the levels of any hypergol vapors still in existence around the capsule. And then they'll be able to step back in uh, to this hatch opening. Now, we did hear confirmation that they haven't seen any indication of leaks through the telemetry they're still receiving from the Dragon capsule. And so Dragon SpaceX, we're going to purge for one more minute. All right, there we go. Copy. There we go, should be one more minute. And then if levels have dropped sufficiently, we'll be able to step back in to the hatch opening process. Yeah, I want to see the astronauts. Come on. Let them smile into the camera. They've earned it. They're probably going to be put into wheelchairs or something. Bob and Doug will be getting assistance from the recovery teams while exiting Dragon Endeavor. Uh, this is the same process for any returning long duration crew members uh, mm -hmm. as returning to a gravity rich environment can, you know, be a little jarring, wreak havoc with our vestibular system. So, uh, which is responsible for maintaining balance and motion. Of course, as you've heard us say multiple times earlier, uh, safety is our number one priority with this operation. So you will see both Bob and Doug helped out of the capsule and assisted to just the few feet over to the medical quarters uh, aboard the boat. Yeah, if, if you've ever watched long duration crews return on a Soyuz, it's a pretty similar process where they're literally carried out of the capsule and immediately placed down into a waiting chair where they usually get some initial medical checks out there in the field before they're then carried to an inflated medical tent. Uh, we don't have a tent, we have quarters, and they're a whole lot closer, so they'll just have a couple of feet to go from the capsule itself into those medical quarters. And then once they're in there, they'll get some initial checkouts uh, from their flight surgeons who are on location on the boat with them. These are the people that have essentially been responsible for their health and well-being throughout their mission, uh, both beforehand, all of their pre-flight data takes, uh, offering them support uh, in the lead up to launch, uh, and then the entire time while on board the International Space Station. And then they're right here with the front line, with the recovery teams, ready to welcome them home. All right. So it's been just about a minute since we heard that last call to the crew. We should be just about done with the purge. We're gonna stand by and hopefully we'll resume these hatch opening operations uh, in just a moment. Well, we'll know as soon as they take off their masks. Hard to see. Reading, taking readings again. Try again, SpaceX for update. Okay, exterior, we're seeing uh, three parts per million NTO and six parts per billion of uh, MMH. Anil, however, is asking that you uh, de-stow your draggers and take a sample inside the cabin. Okay. Yeah, well, if you detect something inside yeah, the cabin... Yeah, which detector? What number, Mike? Yeah, it'll be uh, detectors two and three in location 14. Copy. Okay, thanks, Doug. 
So, did you. Right, so we just got the, the call out of the current readings of both uh, the NTO, the nitrogen tetroxide, and the monomethyl hydrazine, uh, either in the parts per million or the parts per billion. But just as an extra safety precaution, uh, we heard Anil, so Anil met in the uh, medical authority from SpaceX on the boat, asking the crew to take out some uh, air detectors that they have inside with them just to do some quick sampling inside the cabin itself. So again, we've said it before, we'll continue to say it throughout safety, the top priority with this operation. So the teams are going to be very methodical and make sure that everything is in a good setup, a safe environment, uh, not only for the crew themselves, but also for our recovery forces. Okay, can uh, you- For can... now, Bob and Doug still inside of Crew Dragon. We are just 58 minutes post landing. Can somebody help me here real quick? If there is gas on the outside and that gas is now really reduced down to a to a non-toxic level, why would you want to test the air uh, on the dragon with a status? Go ahead, Doug. Okay, for uh, NO2 on detector two, it reads zero point zero. That's good news. And on detector three, it also reads 0, 0.0 for MMH. Okay, great news. 0, 0.0 for detectors two and three for NO2 and MMH. Thank you very much. Still don't That's get it. Copy. <laughs> if there would have been toxic Answer gas. Doug Hurley reporting zeros across the board, no traces uh, of either the NTO or the MMH. Yeah, um, no, I don't think it was an initial connection leak during fueling. Um, it is residue from using the from using the whole system. That is what caused the detectors on the outside to 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 um, tell them. What I was wondering though is, if there was no toxic gas anymore on the outside or healthy levels. Why would they want the astronauts to test the, the the air on the in in the capsule if they I mean if okay so if the test goes zero everything's fine but if the test went oh my god toxic levels wouldn't it be better to open the hatch anyway <laughs> uh. Dragon SpaceX for a status update Extra caution, yeah, I, I get it. Okay, so currently our exposure limits um, are below <laughs> limits, but the purge is actually doing a pretty good job. We saw NTO go from uh, three parts per million down to 1.5 over the last few minutes. So ideally, with a lot of caution, we'd go ahead and let the purge run for a little bit longer. Sorry. But we want to see how you guys yeah. are doing, if you're okay with uh, continuing with, a, with the uh, purge versus uh, knock it off and uh, get you guys out of there quickly. Yeah, we're fine to hang it out, Mike. Uh, yeah, no problem here. Okay, thanks for that, Doug. We'll uh, keep working the purge to uh, get us down, and uh, and uh, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yeah, let's just keep everybody safe. No reason to rush. That is actually very, very true. Yeah, we concur. Yep, good call. Spacecraft Commander Doug Hurley reporting the crew still doing well in Dragon. So they are good to continue to hang out. Uh, the medical authority there on the boat recommending uh, as long as the crew is okay and still doing well inside Dragon, they'll just continue with the purge, trying to get those uh, trace readings of any hypergol vapors all the way down to zero. Because again, we're really focused on not only keeping the astronauts safe, but all of the recovery engineers and medical professionals there on the scene as well. So they're gonna continue this purge, just uh, dispelling uh, the immediate area around the service section uh, of the Dragon spacecraft. So this is uh, really a series of fuel tanks um, outside of the pressure vessel. So where uh, Bob and Doug are inside the Dragon spacecraft, which they did uh, some quick readings inside the cabin and had zeros across the board. Uh, but they're just continuing to let these levels dissipate, bring it down to zero, and then we'll resume hatch operations. We're just a little over an hour now, an hour and two minutes post splashdown. Yeah, good to hear Bob and Doug report that 
they're good hanging out, meaning they're feeling all right, and they're pretty comfortable staying inside for just a couple more minutes. Yeah, they were, they were doing their best uh, prior to leaving uh, of playing up their expected seasickness. Um, so good, it, it is good to hear that they're doing well still inside the Dragon Capsule. Yep. Yeah, well, um, hypergolic fuels are extremely toxic and carcinogenic and acidic. And you really, really don't want to have that stuff around you. It is uh, an extremely volatile substance. So it's totally um, understandable why they are going the super safe route here um, by purging and getting um, making sure that there is nothing left before opening the hatch it and does make sense SpaceX, we're still seeing good indications from the purge we're looking to uh, go about another five minutes and looking for zero indications if at any time you'd like us to speed things up please uh, let us know oh, we're good just keep doing what you're doing we can wait the five easy good all right thanks doug so they would theoretically be able to let them out, but they're just right, going so we'll the same way in. so we'll settle in uh, at least another five minutes while they just continue to disperse any trace remnants of those hypergol fuels around the service section uh, of Dragon before we once again step uh, into the hatch opening. Uh, yeah. We're going we're gonna to stay with you, stay with this, until Bob and Doug are out of the capsule and into their medical quarters. I think I haven't given Pavan a shout-out yet. At this out point, yet. Bob and Doug are still uh, strapped into their seats. The seats have actuated uh, away from the position where, I guess, in the orientation in which you see the capsule now. Uh, during their on-orbit, excuse me, during the departure phasing earlier this morning and yesterday, the orientation of the seats were such that uh, essentially, Bob and Doug would have been laying on their backs in the orientation where we see Dragon now. Uh, currently, the seats have actuated upward slightly, so uh, they are not completely upright. But they are reclined a little bit, nice and comfy there, uh, but they are able to see in and out of those windows there that we see on either side of the side hatch. And Dennis Marco Aurel, thank you and very, very much for Once they're able to chat. finish the really... Uh, the egress process, getting Bob and Doug out of the capsule. Uh, once they're in the medical area, they'll look to start bringing in the helicopter um, as both uh, Bob and Doug are going to be flown back to Pensacola via helicopter, uh, getting them uh, to the shore in just a matter of minutes, where a NASA plane is going to be standing by to then load them up and bring them home to Ellington Airfield at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Uh, so I'm guessing there there won't be an interview with Bob and Doug anytime soon. If they are flown with a helicopter back to land and then taken with a plane back to Kennedy. So what does the gas detector say? And a Dragon SpaceX, things are still trending well. We're expecting another reading in about two minutes, so at 1956, and uh, looking to hopefully egress you guys shortly after that. Good. Okay, sounds good, bud. Thank you. Hmm. I wonder if this was... In light of one of the social media questions that we were asked earlier, someone asked if... Bob and Doug have Netflix available on their heads-up displays there in the capsule, and uh, they've been—they've actually been pretty busy throughout um, this mission. You know, monitoring telemetry and data, and <laughs> checking Netflix. for timing. Yeah. Uh, and I would say now's about the time that they would certainly want something to watch because uh, you know, at this point, their only job left to do is uh, get <laughs> out of the capsule. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix on board Netflix streaming has to be a feeling of just success though for those two I mean taking taking the first flight in a brand new spacecraft we knew as test pilots this is something 
uh, that was kind of their bread and butter when they were in the military, and definitely something they, they left at the chance for uh, once they became astronauts. And really a, a pretty flawless flight for Dragon. Uh, obviously, we'll have all of the, the post-flight review coming up in the next several weeks as we uh, continue to assess all the data uh, that we received throughout the mission and any data still recorded locally on Dragon itself. And we'll be spending the next several weeks uh, going through and assessing the mission and working through the certification process. And we're already targeting uh, the first operational flight, uh, currently pegged for no earlier than late September. Yeah, it looks good now. Many people back. Nobody wearing breathing protection. And Dragon SpaceX, we're now planning to stop the purge in one minute at about 19.57. Copy. Thank you. I think the crew is calm. Uh, somebody just said that crew is not calm. Right, well, I think the crew is stopping calm. stopping the purge in about a minute, that means that the levels have gone down to what they were looking for, and then we'll begin to to step back into the hatch opening process and then be able to get Bob and Doug egressing or moving out of the Dragon capsule. They've been in there for a little more than 19 hours at this point since they departed the space station on Saturday. They had a sleep period, eight hours of rest on the capsule on their way home. Uh, they've been up since a little bit earlier this morning that, that wake coming about 4.40 a.m. Pacific, so a little more than eight hours ago. They just have a lot of stuff to do. That's why they're moving so fast. They have to, a lot of things, a lot of checklists. Uh, and this is, a, it's a, yeah, he's giving a thumbs up. Uh, this is a non-nominal situation, so they, and this is and the, the first dragon, time. The uh, purge is now complete. One more Drager <laughs> check, and then we should proceed with hatch opening. So they just want to make sure that everything on the checklist. Okay, good news, thanks. That is good news indeed. So confirmation that the purge is complete and that they're just going to do one more test to make sure that uh, all of the fumes of concern are away and that it is safe to open that side hatch and retrieve Bob and Doug. Once again, once that side hatch is open, our flight surgeon will be the first to say hello get a quick medical checkup, although based on the reports that they've been, uh, that the crew have been giving us along the way, it sounds like they're doing great, they're feeling good, and they're pretty comfortable there inside a Crew Dragon. New member, Captain K, thank you very, very much. So, we're getting close now. Finally. And uh, Dragon SpaceX, we show 0 0.4 parts per million on NTO, 18 parts per billion of MMH. That's below limits. We are proceeding with hatch opening. Woohoo! Nice. Okay, great news. Thanks, Mike. All right, so there's the green light we've been waiting for. Uh, in fact, the green light <laughs> we've been waiting for for months at this point. Uh, this is our first opportunity to say hello to Bob and Doug, our favorite space dads. Uh, as they are now about to uh, egress or exit from Dragon Crew Endeavor. The Space Dads. Again, this is the culmination of uh, what has been about a 19-hour journey home, all starting yesterday as they departed the International Space Station. Absolutely crazy. Really so this nice. hatch will be manually opened, and once doing so, Flight Surgeon Anil Menon will uh, say hello and make sure that they're still doing all right and then proceed to assist them with exiting the capsule. There we go. And we see the hatch is now open. Hatch being opened at 12.59 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> Woo! Yes, that's hatch some fresh air into the capsule. Very nice. So right now they're gonna put a piece of equipment in there that basically smooths out the edges and makes sure uh, that it is a comfortable exit from the Dragon capsule. Just a little piece of structure there to ensure that 
uh, the hatch will remain open and that any sharp edges around that side hatch are protected. Awesome capsule. Even when it's burned up, it looks good. Might even look a little bit better now. The blue suit there, that's one of NASA's flight surgeons for the crew, that's Dr. Stephen Hart. And that hatch open coming at 12.59 p.m. Pacific, that's 19.59 Universal Time or GMT. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Here we go. <clears throat> Show us some astronauts. Come on. So once again, the SpaceX recovery team is now assisting NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley uh, to exit the spacecraft. Sorry, we got the hatch open just about two minutes ago. We paused for a little while as they were just detecting some trace amounts of uh, some of the hypergolf fuels. Uh, so we executed a series of purges. Um, and then once those were down back in acceptable limits, uh, we were able to then start with the egress. So there we see a stretcher on deck. Uh, this is normal. Uh, this is part of the standard recovery procedure. And uh, it is just simply to ensure Bob and Doug remain safe. Uh, like we said, readjusting to gravity can be a little challenging. Uh, dizziness can often occur, especially when you're on a boat. So this stretcher will just be used to uh, a standard procedure to make sure that the astronauts make it over to the medical tent as easily and as comfortably as possible. Yeah, as we discussed, uh, the reintroduction to, to gravity from microgravity can be a bit jarring, especially on our vestibular system, so the stuff responsible for our balance. And as they are on a ship underway, we just want to make sure we're taking every possible precaution to ensure that their arrival is safe and free from any injury now that they are home. And the dragon has opened its mouth. Ah. And in September, we're already going to see the next one. This is so awesome. And on crew two, uh, Bankins. We're gonna get a few of the items uh, from the seats out of the way first before they begin extracting our crew members. They'll be coming out one at a time. Bankin's wife is going to fly on crew too. Absolutely awesome as well. It's not a first flight either. As we saw during the ascent portion of this mission, there is enough room inside the capsule for uh, them to do a backflip in <laughs> microgravity. However, considering uh, there's a couple folks in there right now from the recovery yeah. team. It does look like ice in the mouth. Catch a lad and clear. Just a quick comm check there between Dragon and Mission Control and here. And Solo from the PLC, I just wanted to thank guys for uh, bringing us home safe before we uh i disembark from ship endeavor i'm sure doug will have some good words for you guys as well but uh thank you for doing the most difficult parts and the most impart important parts of uh human space flight getting us into orbit and bringing us home safely thank you again for the good ship endeavor Thank you, Bob, for those awesome words. It's, it's absolutely been an honor and a pleasure to work with you from the entire SpaceX team. It's been awesome. Yeah. 
endeavor goes goes into the history books. Some initial words from NASA astronaut Bob Banken. He's in the pilot seat, so you've heard him refer to himself as PLT. We're still standing by for our crew members to begin making their way out of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Thank you. Yeah, and they're going to get some assistance just the, the couple of feet to the medical quarters on board the ship uh, where they're going to be able to uh, get out of their suits that they've been wearing for all the, the final dynamic phases of the uh, separation events, deorbit burn, re-entry, uh, splashing down uh, just a little over an hour ago at 11.48 p.m. or a.m. Pacific time. Thank you very much for the super chat, Dennis. Much appreciated. Again, the recovery team. SpaceX Dragon from the command. Absolutely. Here they come. Go for SpaceX. There we have our first view of yeah, Doug Curley. I just would like to sort of reiterate what Bob said and add uh, my thanks to uh, everybody over the last several years that's either worked in Hawthorne, McGregor, or down at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Anybody who's touched Endeavor, uh, you should take a moment to just cherish this day, especially given all the things that have happened this year. Uh, we certainly can't thank you enough. Our families can't thank you enough. And, uh, just proud to be a small part of this whole effort to get the, the company people to and from the space station they can celebrate with each other see some and uh, we'll talk to you soon hopefully in person awesome thanks so much doug and you're welcome and, and thank you so much for those kind words and we all wish you a safe journey home and a happy reunion with your family soon and we look forward to seeing you in person as well Really nice words there from <laughs> Bob Benkin. There on your screen, we saw awesome. uh, NASA astronaut Doug Hurley egressing or exiting from the capsule. Might have been hard to see on your screen there, but um, we got a thumbs up indicating that uh, things are going well. <sighs> Sorry, excuse me, I mixed up my positions there. Yeah, uh, those words were from Doug, and we have Bob that just came out first. Yeah, so Bob Banken, uh, the pilot, the Joint Operations Commander for this mission out of the capsule now. So he's making his way over to the medical area, and now they're going to work to get Doug Hurley out next. And I think I saw a smile back. on Bob's face. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a thumbs up all the way as they've been giving Epic. us some regular status updates from inside the capsule. They've been feeling really good. And so now we're just standing by for our spacecraft commander, Doug Hurley, to make his way out into the fresh air for the first time in 64 days. You're very welcome, Dustin. Thank you very much for the super chat. And yeah, it was crazy. It went down to the second. <laughs> Played out great. And there we go. SpaceX wasn't able to say it correctly. I was. <laughs> Eric, thank you very much. German precision. That's German engineering right there. <laughs> there comes Doug. It's nice how they can slide them out of the capsule there. All right, so they're getting set up, and we should see spacecraft commander Doug Hurley making his way out of the capsule. And it looks like we've got him out. Thank you. Got Take him six seated. Back. Yes, I'm from Germany. 
I don't know. It was it was pure luck though with that. Here we go, another thumbs up. Yeah, we've got some applause here. And as you can see in Mission Control, a standing <laughs> ovation for a job well done all around. Yeah, our, our crew members, awesome. Bob and Doug, are now safely back home on Earth. And uh, they're going to get checked out now by the NASA medical team. They're going straight into the medical quarters on board the ship. That'll be their first stop on planet Earth. And then they're going to be making their way up into a helicopter and then heading back to dry land. So uh, once they're complete, the team's going to prepare Dragon itself. Uh, and they're going to begin uh, taking it back to shore. Uh, but just it's been an incredible, incredible mission. Uh, this all kicked off just two months ago on May 30th yes. from Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center Bye, in Florida. Elon. We had a successful liftoff. We had to dodge around some weather. Thank it was suspenseful, clearing up the last possible moment. They had a flawless ride to orbit, a 19-hour journey to the International Space Station where they just spent 62 days on board, 64 total days in space. They were Expedition 30, 63 crew members doing science experiments, spacewalks, repairs, everything on board the orbiting laboratory. Their journey home began yesterday when they closed the hatch to Dragon and undocked hours later at 4.35 p.m. Pacific. After four successful departure burns and a phasing burn to line up their orbit, Bob and Doug rested up before waking up for a re-entry earlier this morning. We successfully jettisoned Dragon's trunk and performed our final on-orbit maneuver, the deorbit burn, at 10.56 a.m. Pacific to send Dragon on the path home. The spacecraft successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and slowed its descent with successful deployments of two drogue parachutes and four mains, with the final splashdown occurring off the coast of Pensacola, Florida at 11.48 a.m. Pacific, right on time. Yes. Following that successful splashdown, we saw SpaceX recovery experts quickly move in and prepare Dragon Endeavor for its lift onto the recovery vessel. And just a little less than an hour following splashdown, we saw Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley make their way, thumbs up, <laughs> out of Dragon and into the recovery ship's medical facilities, safe and sound. Yeah, we just got word that the helicopter itself should be landing soon, so that'll be their next step in their journey. They'll catch a short flight back to shore where they're going to transfer to a waiting NASA plane for another short flight uh, back over to Houston. Uh, they're going to be reunited with their families, and that's going to bring an end to this historic flight. Uh, it's it's really been an honor and a privilege to share this journey with all of you uh, as we open up this new era in human space flight. Uh, but I mean, just as we close the book on this mission, we're already counting down the days to the next crewed Dragon flight. Yeah, absolutely. SpaceX and NASA will now begin the process of reviewing data and telemetry from this successful demonstration mission to prepare us for Crew-1, which is currently targeted to launch no earlier than late September. Crew-1 will be SpaceX's first operational flight, flying a full crew of four astronauts, including our first from Japan, one of the international's partners on the space station. Uh, the mission will last approximately six months. It has been an incredible honor and joy to share this mission with the public, and the teams from SpaceX and NASA have worked so hard to get here and return this capability to fly humans from America. Continue to follow SpaceX and NASA online. And Aww. on our social media updates, and, and social media updates for the next steps on the commercial crew program, and the countdown to Crew One. And we're going to continue to share the progress of Bob and Doug's trip back to that Houston really on social media. We also have a briefing coming up real soon. It's going to include NASA Administrator uh, Jim Bridenstine <laughs> and officials awesome. from NASA and SpaceX. That's coming up right at the bottom of the hour, 1:30 p.m. Pacific, 4:30 p.m. Eastern, 20:30 GMT. So we're going to say thanks one more time for tuning in, cheering on Bob and Doug as they return home. And we'll see you next time when we'll once again be sending astronauts on American rockets in American spacecraft from American soil. So long. Absolutely awesome. Totally understandable why she did that in the end. Absolutely fantastic. That is SpaceX, everybody. <laughs> Beautiful. Alright, I'm gonna turn this down real quick here. That is absolutely epic. That is the conclusion of the demo mission 2 and uh, a crazy journey and I can totally understand why she why she reacted so emotional in the end because that was a lot of work. It's, it's absolutely fantastic to see that happen. 
a flawless performance by everybody uh, working on the mission. It's it's I, I I salute these people. That is absolutely incredible, and we were able to watch it, and uh, yeah, that is something. Uh, um, that's one of those moments that you don't forget, really. I'm I'm pretty sure that'll that'll be a lasting memory, and yeah. All right, I'm gonna turn this off here real quick. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, absolutely fantastic mission. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for watching this with me together tonight for hours. Team space all the way. I've had another super chat that I didn't shout out for, and I really don't want to forget anybody because you guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for your support, John. Kmiek, I really, really hope that I did that correctly. I'm um, gonna change the. There we go again. I'm, I'm big. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you all for your support for, for, for uh, doing this tonight with me. That was epic and absolutely awesome. Um, Thanks to everybody who's done super chats. Thanks to any everybody who's who's become a member. If you um, if you become a member, you get access to our Discord, and I'm on that Discord every day. I produce episodes twice a week on there. I we write scripts. We check uh, uh, everything we do. We 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 produce there. So it is really really worth it. If you want to join us, um, everybody like all the moderators and inc including me and everybody else who's on the discord would be, would welcome welcome you with open arms um if you want to do check out my merchandise store um there are tons of really really nice designs on there like 99 percent of them i made myself in my free time so go check them out and uh, uh see if you if you find anything that you like um I'm not going to answer any more questions tonight because this live stream took a long time. And uh, if Starship hops tomorrow, <laughs> I'll have insane amounts of work to do again. Um, yeah, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This was absolutely epic. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be crying real soon here. This is this is a once in a lifetime thing. It's it's the same as an Apollo touchdown in my opinion. It, it there's incredible amounts of work behind this and SpaceX has just shown the whole world that a private company can do this for it for for a, a a very very good price in a very very good time and uh I I I take my hat for all of them. This is incredible and uh yeah, there is another company out there that has n that now has to show that they can do it too. Uh, and it's going to be hard to achieve the same that SpaceX just did, uh, to say the least. They did a really, really awesome job there. And uh, yeah, I, I got another super chat here from Keep It Medi Medicinal. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for the support. Um, Absolutely awesome. Like I said, I enjoyed it very, very much to do this with all of you. Every time I have a live stream, this I'm I'm still new at this. <laughs> I started the channel a year ago or a little over a year ago, and every time I do a live stream, I feel like I'm I'm actually watching this with all of you, and that's what makes this great, and uh, that's why you guys rock and uh, enjoy the evening. Um, check out Lab Padre's live cam if there is something happening tonight. But I really, I'm, I have to say, I doubt it because Elon Musk is in Hawthorne, and I'm pretty sure he wants to be in Boca Chica uh, for the Starship hop. So could be something happening tonight. Who you never know. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I don't know. Um, other than that, enjoy your evening. Uh, maybe rewatch the stream or something. Like the stream. Uh, that is very, very important for others to find it. Um, I can't uh, stress that more, uh, stress that enough because the al the YouTube algorithm works like that. So click that thumbs up. Uh, it helps me a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And like I said, enjoy your evening. And uh, it was great to have you here. I'm gonna uh, set this to to the end scene right now. And uh, you're gonna hear some more music. The trailer is gonna play play again, and then uh, yeah, have a beer uh, or whatever you want to have as a cold beverage, and enjoy the evening. Bye, everybody. My
my name is Felix, and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? So let's dive right into the exciting news topics. Let's dive right in. Let's dive. Right in. Right in. You rock.
My name is Felix and I am your host for today's